completed there. Let's go on over to the next one. Perhaps the biggest change is the running clock on first downs, meaning outside of the final two minutes of a half, the clock will not stop for a first down, certainly speeding up the game and limiting the amount of possessions are in effect. All right, let's weigh in now. Presented by Heineken Silver. Mahalo to Steven for allowing us to use his silhouette for that graphic right there. All right, guys, the rule change. Let's just talk about that last one, right? Are you in, are you out? Like or no like as far as no running clock on the, or the, the clock now runs here on first downs, it doesn't stop. How do you like it, Jordan? I like it. Uh, I, I would say the goal was to speed up games, right? I don't know if it's really done that. Like, games are still over three hours long. Maybe we're not getting the three hours and 45 minutes Ohio State-Michigan games that we were getting uh, at Big Noon or something like that. But what we've seen is limited possessions. It's the talk of all the coaches. You, you talk to anybody around the country. That's all they can talk about. It's going to change the game. They'll adapt. They'll find ways to kind of game around the rules. But it is limited possession. It has put the emphasis on starting fast. Steven, in or out? In. Um, I like faster games, and I you know, wish now they could work on no lightning delays and speeding up volleyball matches, too. RJ? I don't even know. I'm not a coach, <laughs> so, you know, I think it ruins a four-minute offense. But other than that, I don't even see the point of putting it in, so maybe out. I dig it. I like the fact that possessions are super valuable. And you know what else is valuable? Commercials. We got one coming up. We'll be back on the other end of this break. Be part of the journey as your Rainbow Warriors take the field. Experience incredible plays, thrilling moments, and gridiron battles right from the comfort of your home. Rainbow Warrior football on Spectrum Sports Pay-Per-View. Order today. Decorating? With hundreds of factory colors and free computerized paint matching, you can find the Benjamin Moore color you're looking for at City Mill. Need something? Try check City Mill. There's nothing I love more than being a farmer. Every day, I get to care for my sheep and feel connected to the land. Believe it or not, I think it makes me better at my other job, managing Bank of Hawaii's branches in Hilo. Because like farming, banking is all about caring for the needs of customers and businesses in our local community so they can grow and reach their fullest potential. I'm Steven Sylvester, and I'm proud to work for a company that gave a farmer like me the chance to make a difference in my community. Be part of the journey as your Rainbow Warriors take the field. Experience incredible plays, thrilling moments, and gridiron battles right from the comfort of your home. Rainbow Warrior football on Spectrum Sports Pay-Per-View. Order today. Buckle up. Spectrum OC 16 and XCast is giving you the thrill ride of the fall. We rise above the net with the best in prep volleyball. And massive matchups on the gridiron set the tone as the push for the playoffs begin. On air, online, or on the app. Hang on for a wild ride in September. From your home for Hawaii High School Sports, Spectrum OC 16 and XCast. Exclusively on Spectrum.
invite you to stand and sing as the Rainbow Warrior Marching Band pay a special tribute to Coach Timmy Chang and the 2023 Rainbow Warrior Football Team. Right, guys it's almost time for a kickoff that means it's time to check in with our watch list and let's start with the impact players from albany headlined by an extremely efficient quarterback in reese poffenbarger right jordan this guy can play uh he's super athletic he's an old dominion transfer his second year with this albany program was the caa rookie of the year last season yeah, 20, he's kind of partnered up University with jared ambrose of their Albany. offensive coordinator who's also in his second year with this albany program those two guys actually from the same hometown in maryland he is a real dual threat when it comes down to it he can really hurt you with legs had a huge touchdown run last week in that near upset against march it's going to be a different assignment for this Hawaii defense, talking to Coach Jake Yoro, right, the way he puts it, that Stanford running game with their quarterback runs really designed for the quarterback. This much more your traditional zone read where he's going to be really um, afforded a couple of different options, whether it's the handoff, whether it's keeping it around the edge. They know that they need to slow down number seven in this ballgame. All right, let's look at the Rainbow Warriors now. RJ, we'll start with you as far as the impact players that you're looking at. Who are you putting under on spotlight for the University of Hawaii? Well, I talked so much about vanilla assignment completion, and I went vanilla on mine. I'm going <laughs> Braden Shager. Uh, the gunslinger, the man underneath the center, or in shotgun, so to speak. 350 yards and three touchdowns per game through your first two against Power 5 opponents. One of those games being in Nashville. Now you're on the road. You're, I mean, now you're at home, excuse me. You're facing an FCS opponent who had to travel 5,000 miles just to go against you. You got Ashlock. You got McBride. You got Kawhi. Wally Nishigaya, who we've all been waiting to have his explosive outcome. So now everything's kind of lined up for you. There's no more. This is the more favorite team. This is the better team on paper. Right now, this is Braden Shager's ultimate chance for a come out party. And what's better at a party than Shager bombs, especially if you're <laughs> in the collegiate level. But in all seriousness, I think this is the time where Braden Shager is going to be able to step up and really show not only the fans and us analysts what he has, but those guys in the locker room with him, as well as Timmy Chang. I'm sensing a theme out of RJ here tonight. If you're over 21, feel free to participate. Steven Sai, who you got? All right, I got Mickey Pay. I think he wants to make up for last week uh, getting ejected for targeting. It'll be payback if we're going to go bad puns today. And also, um, he is the last line of defense against Albany's uh, uh, Johnny Football. So I think he'll have a big game. Jordan Haley, who are you looking at? Yeah, for me, I, I got to give a shout out, right? My fellow Maui guy, Carson Pupunu. Uh, who had a huge catch last week, right, that helped set up the field goal late in the first half against Stanford. The Lahaina boy, he and Kimo Holo Holt Mossman, the two Maui boys on the team. Kimo from up country, another hard-hit area of Maui, and obviously everybody has had Maui on their mind. Um, Rob and KHON did a terrific story on Carson, his family, some of the family losses that they suffered along with the countless others on the west side of Maui. He's part of a young, emerging group of pass catchers. He continues to emerge, continue to get playing time. The Weber State transfer, playing with a heavy heart, uh, his brother is a Maui police officer who has you know, been working tirelessly with all the other first responders over on the Valley Isle. Just kudos to everybody who has stepped up to help out, and the football team at the University of Hawaii has done their part as well. Donation drives, 
everything that they could have done in the time to support Carson as well uh, in some of the emotional and, and, and support that, that, that he needed and, and continues to, to, you know, power through playing for a bigger purpose here this season. Awesome. I love that. Anyone watching in Maui, we love you. Much aloha going out there to the Valley Isle. And I'm going to go with the linebacker position, Noah Kemma, playing in place of Isaiah Tufanga, who will be out for the first half because of the targeting hit last week in the loss to Stanford. We all saw what Logan Taylor was able to do last year when given the chance to replace an injured Tufanga. Kemma has appeared in all 15 games of his two-year UH career in a reserve role. He's yet to have that breakout performance. Two quarters against Albany gives him that chance that he's been waiting for. We'll see if he's able to make the most of it as he runs with the Lion Den. All right, guys, real quickly, Clarence T.C. Ching Athletics Complex. When you look at the expansion made this season, adding seats, adding the Jumbotron, you had a, probably the best student section I've seen since 2007 here last week against Stanford. How significant is this, RJ? As someone that played at Aloha Stadium, to have these games on campus, what does that mean to this team? I mean, it should mean everything. When I was a player, we used to love just to have practices on T.C. Ching when we would pull up and see all the pads and dummies on the T.C. Ching. We just wanted to practice there. To have a game there, I can only imagine what that feels like for the atmosphere, for the excitement. I've been smelling something in grease that's deep fried right behind me. It's been attracting me all night. So the noise is there, the food is is there the opportunity is there got to make something happen Jordan how cool is this man Clarence DC Ching Athletics Complex this vibe that they have yeah I think it's great I think one thing that the program has strived to do under coach Chang be accessible right in the community and on campus as well right it's accessible to the students it's accessible to the folks yeah you got to fight the parking and all of that stuff but they have really made strides in trying to make this as fan friendly as possible as student friendly as possible and trying to truly be a team of the community and for the community and you're seeing that and I, we saw that last week and hopefully they can continue to build on that the rest of the home schedule this university of hawaii football team has made it a focus to capture the uniqueness of the islands to capture the essence of what makes Hawaii football so much more special than other places because you're representing a culture you're representing so much and you're gonna be seeing something here shortly that the Rainbow Warriors have put into play this season as far as the entrance goes and you have Tihati Productions play a big part of it with the drummer and the warrior and the chief leading this team onto the field we're excited to be able to show that to you here shortly but Stephen you were there when Timmy Chang took over this program and talked about, hey, we need to make this Hawaii's team once again. We need to make people feel like this is a team that represents the entire state, all of the islands, all of Polynesia. So how significant is something like this that they're now bringing back into the program? Yeah, I think it's great to bring back the many warriors they're bringing back. And it's also great that they're also connecting with the past. They're bringing in a lot of the old former players out here and, and, and making a meet and greet with, with the fans, which I think is great. It's the interaction is always a big part of it. All right, we talked about it. We are going to give you the full experience of what this Rainbow Warrior football team does. It gives you chicken skin. Uh, I was here last week when they came out against Stanford, and you have the Israel Kamaka Vivole song playing with the Hawaii 78, and that gets everyone to their feet. And then that sets up the drummers to start doing their thing. The chief comes out. And, and this is something that that a lot of people, I think, are going to walk away from this stadium remembering. And I think that's something that's important to this program as far as, hey, you're not coming just to a football game. You're coming to experience Hawaiiana. You're coming to experience something that you'll only get here at the University of Hawaii. And, and so, absolutely, it is something that will be memorable and uh, we'd like to bring that to you right now let's go down to the field let you soak up all the energy of the rainbow warrior entrance let out by the hui from tihati productions we're going to catch you back at halftime but enjoy the game with kanoa Leahy and rich miano calling the action here are your rainbow warriors in 2023 
Aloha, I'm tax attorney Adam Brewer. If you have a serious tax problem with the IRS or state of Hawaii, then you don't need a tax relief company, you need a tax attorney. Call or visit my website to schedule your free tax evaluation. A diagnosis of mesothelioma or asbestos-related lung cancer changes your life instantly. Where do you turn for help? Gallagher Day Robertus and Waxman, the leading Hawaii mesothelioma law firm that has been representing clients for nearly 40 years. We really believe in our clients and their stories and experiences, and we believe in getting the best result we can for them. If you've been diagnosed with mesothelioma or an asbestos-related lung cancer, call Gallagher Day Robertus and Waxman today. Aloha, I'm tax attorney Adam Brewer. If you have a serious tax problem with the IRS or state of Hawaii, then you don't need a tax relief company, you need a tax attorney. Call or visit my website to schedule your free tax evaluation. against two power conference opponents, Hawaii's 0-2 start can be heavily attributed to self-inflicted wounds. You might expect an FCS opponent to be a welcome sight. But head coach Timmy Chang has spent a full week ratcheting up the intensity with the knowledge that no opponent can be taken lightly, especially one with a big bite. The Great Danes of U Albany have dialed long distance. The Rainbow Warriors are hungry for a win, no downgrading the importance of the last game of the day in college football. And with that, we welcome you to Clarence T.C. Ching Athletic Complex. Game three of the season for the Rainbow Warriors as they play host to the U Albany Great Danes coming a long way from the state of New York to play this battle, FCS versus FBS. Aloha, everybody. Alongside Rich Miano, I'm Kanoa Leahy. And Rich, he has an 0-2 start for Hawaii. That said, there have been some areas of promise for this Rainbow Warrior team. Tremendous promise, especially in the aerial passing game. We know the negatives in terms of getting the run game started this evening, but also on the offensive and defensive lines of scrimmage against Power 5 opponents, they've shown some bright spots, and I think if they can dominate those two sides of the ball especially up front that this will be a, a very nice victory for Timmy Chang in this season on the other side you have a great Danes team that led 10 nothing against Marshall on the road last week they ultimately lost that game but they're coming in confident so rich take us through the Kaiser Permanente keys to the game Yeah, let's start with U Albany on offense. Johnny Football. Reese Poffenbarger needs to keep the Johnny Football nickname intact by making and extending plays. On defense, they got to rattle Shager and stop the run. Ten sacks versus Fordham the first game. The Great Danes need to make Shager visibly uncomfortable and stop Hawaii from reestablishing the run game. For Hawaii, free Tylen Hines. Hawaii's most explosive player has been dormant. Also on defense bring it zero turnovers in two games you must be fast you got to be aggressive you got to hit people the lion's den has to come out tonight so you have a U Albany team that's one and one on the season they opened the year with a victory against Fordham 34 13 and we mentioned that narrow defeat at Marshall last week 21 17 and the plot thickens for them because head coach Greg Catuso 10-year veteran on top of this program did not make the trip due to an illness uh, and so we are told that he is doing fine so that's good news but uh, because of that Jared Ambrose the associate head coach and offensive coordinator he takes over and it was funny we spoke with him earlier this week and he was saying I thought we were gonna make this long trip to Hawaii I'd just be you know calling some plays and working on the offensive scheme and little did he know he'd have to help coordinate this thing set up curfew time set up meals uh, it is a whole ordeal and endeavor when you're the main man yeah and after this trip they'll have traveled 12,000 miles and they're talking about how do you get used to time zones that is six hours away and they're talking about getting on the Hawaii standard time as quick as possible hydrate and what they're doing also is they got in the water they thought if they submerged themselves underwater that would help them adjust to Hawaii standard time zone and you talk about a team that just 
played on Saturday night, got home somewhere around 3 or 4 in the morning on Sunday a.m., and then had to travel on Tuesday to Hawaii. This team is well-traveled, they're well-coached, and I expect a good football game. So Hawaii won the toss, elected to defer. They will be kicking here to start this game. It will be Ben Falk, the 6'6", 230-pound place kicker, punter slash holder. Jack of many trades who will be kicking it away. Has recorded three touchbacks so far this season. And back to receive for the Great Danes, Griffin Woodell and Levi Wentz. And so here we go, Hawaii still hunting for win number one in 2023, and the kick will be blasted through the end zone, and a touchback. U Albany will have first crack out. All right, well, let's take a look at the Hawaiian Financial FCU starting lineups. As the Great Danes take the field. We'll start with Reese Poffenbarger, six-foot sophomore from Middletown, Maryland, actually from the same hometown as the acting head coach Jared Ambrose. This is a guy who has put up some gaudy numbers. Five touchdown passes, ran for a 54-yard touchdown run against Marshall last week. No turnovers, most importantly perhaps, for this U Albany offense, but we have some penalty flags before we can even snap the ball. Proud of the snap. False start, number 73, offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Nolan Dumas is the head referee here for this evening's festivities. So first and 15 here, face all Aiden is in the backfield. They fake the handoff to him, and the pass goes through the hands of Jackson Parker, who coming in has seven catches for 73 yards. All right, let's take a look at the starters here. Again, brought to you by Hawaiian Financial FCU. Ian Renninger, Julian Hicks, Jackson Parker, who you saw right there, Roy Alexander, and Faisal Aiden, the skill position players up front. Hutchinson, Mosier, Hausman, Murata, and Latuli. These are guys who aren't necessarily the four stars and five stars when they're coming through the prep ranks, but this is a unit that acting head coach Jared Ambrose says they're very confident in, and they play as a unit as this pass is swung out to Brevin Easton. He has been the top target here so far this year for Poffenbarger, and he's able to get some positive yardage there. All right, let's meet the starters on the defensive side for Hawaii. Andrew Choi, Kuau Pehopa, and John Tui Tupo, the big fellas up front. Kahavai Welch, Kema, Taylor, and Palmer. The linebacker and nickelback, and then Edwards, Manuma, Pei, and Forrest. Again, no Cam Stone hurt himself in the game against Stanford. Also, for this first half, no Isaiah Tufunga, who was disqualified in the second half last week due to a targeting penalty. So he has to sit out the first half here tonight as that pass is in and out of the hands of Julian Hicks. And so that's going to bring up a fourth down here for you, Albany. Some near misses on that offensive possession for the Great Danes. Yeah, the quick passing game, and this is the quick slant. Really good job in terms of trying to really gain inside leverage with that right foot and then really accelerating to that slant. Not a bad throw, just slightly overthrown football. Tyler Pastula is the punter he is on. 6'3", senior. And Stephen McBride is back, but it's blocked. It's blocked, and Hawaii trying to corral it, and it is scooped up, but the special teams for the Rainbow Warriors, much maligned, by the way, in the opener at Vanderbilt, they come up big right there. Yeah, and this is a good job of overloading protection. They come from the left side, and there was four guys that really penetrated the wedge, and that's how you block a kick. You get horizontal, you extend your hands, and almost a scoop and score. And so that appeared to be Carson Pupunu, who came in and blocked that kick or that punt for Hawaii, recovered by Noah Kema. And so how about the story that is Carson Pupuna from Lahaina? Of course, it has been well documented that he lost extended family members in those deadly wildfires on the island of Maui. Uh, he has been playing with a heavy heart, as has the entire University of Hawaii football team, but they have a golden opportunity here off of that incredible play by Carson Pupunu 
to make something happen. That pass to Pofeli Ashlock, though, a rare drop for this fine freshman. All right, let's take a look at the starters for Hawaii quarterback Braden Shager. All he's doing is uh, throwing for over 700 yards through the first two games. That's number one in FBS in terms of total passing yards coming into this week. Of course, Hawaii did play a week zero game. Yeah, and Timmy Chang said he would script the first six plays. So they come out and empty. They throw the quick game. And again, the ball is slippery. The ball, the field is wet. There was some precipitation prior to this game. And we may expect some of his first quarter. And there's Tylen Hines. They really want to get him going. Hawaii right now coming in, averaging less than a yard per rush. They're averaging fewer than 18 rushing yards per game. All right, let's meet the rest of the starters here for Hawaii. Stephen McBride at the receiver position along with Koala Nishigaya, Carson Pupunu, Pafele Ashlock, Tylen Hines, who already has a carry, Josh Atkins, Sergio Muasawa, Liki Tanuvasa, Maurice Ta'ala back from an ailment, and Kaena De Cambra, the offensive lineman. And Hawaii trying to score, obviously, on this drive. They've been slow to start in both previous games. Solo Vaipulu lining up in the backfield for Hawaii. They go a little bigger there. Now Shager looking to scramble. Now he'll tuck it, and he'll get hit and dropped at about the eight-yard line. Isaac Duffy, a transfer from yeah. NC State in his third year with the UAlbany program, coming up and laying the hit there. Yeah, and you can see Shager going through his progression. Then he slides up in the pocket, goes to his right, and give credit to the back end, but also in the red zone, everything is condensed, and that's where the run and shoot sometimes stalls. You have to have a great red zone package because seven is a lot better than three. So here is Matt Shipley on to try the field goal. And from 25 yards out, it is good. And Hawaii strikes first. Special teams accounting for the first three points. You had the block punt by Carson Pupunu. Made a big catch last week against Stanford. A huge block there. And it leads to Matt Shipley. The chip shot, triple, 3-0, Rainbow Warriors. The University of Hawaii Sports on Spectrum Sports. Sponsored by your Hawaii Honda dealers. Aloha, Maui especially to the people of Lahaina. Please know that our hearts and prayers are with you. I was born and raised in Lahaina, and we lost our family home too. I know it's gonna be a long road in rebuilding Lahaina, and I will do whatever I can to help the people of Lahaina. So if you were injured or displaced or lost your home, please call us, we can help you. Welcome back. Let's go inside the numbers presented by Long's Drugs. The number 15,194. That is the now expanded seating capacity of Clarence T.C. Ching Athletic Complex. 9,346 was the capacity number a season ago. They have uh, done what I believe to be a really good job with the expansion, giving it a little bit more of a bowl feeling. Kind of feels more like a traditional football stadium here in 2023, Rich. Yeah, and if the legislature gives them any money next year, it'd be nice for the visitor sidelines to take the place of the track since the track is being moved up into the hills, and uh, that'd be another good expansion of the stadium, but they've done a nice job. So Hawaii up 3 nothing, kicked by Falk again into the end zone. And so you, Albany, will get a second possession here on offense. How about the Hawaii special teams? Much maligned based on some of the early action in that opener on the road in Nashville against Vanderbilt. But they make a big play there, and then Matt Shipley caps it with the field goal. Yeah, you're exactly right. I talked to Thomas Sheffield, and it wasn't the hang time on that kickoff. It was the placement of 
that. But you're right, they're much maligned. They have not played up to their ability. They have not been special, but that was a special play. And they overloaded the protection. That was the block was on, and they converted. They executed. This is a handoff to face all Aiden. And he is ruling that by a bunch of black shirts. Logan Taylor was in on that. Also, Fogi Sila, another guy who was in the mix there. Yeah, I think also John Cobb. Holding for 72. Offense, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. No penalties already an issue here on these first two possessions for mm -hmm. Albany. They had 12 penalties for 107 yards through the first two games. Outside zone, and you did see six. Jonah Kahavai Welch shed the block, come inside to that C gap, and really do a nice job of rising up through that hit. Yeah, good spot there, Rich. Two and a half minutes gone by here in the first quarter. And again, U Albany backed up first and 20. Poffenbarger throws it over the middle. That is a completion to Levi Wentz, and a great ankle tackle there made by Logan Taylor. Ta Taylor has to get double-digit sacks, and that's what he does. But I'll tell you, there was a push in the double team on John Tui Tupo. That's the pressure up the middle. But watch Logan Taylor read, react, come downhill, and secure the tackle. Hawaii did not tackle well last week. One of the team captains here this year in his final season with the Rainbow Warriors, nine tackles. Two TFLs last week against Stanford. Of course, he finished 2022 in a flurry over his last six games. Here is a handoff. This is Aiden. It's a little bit of running room, finally wrapped up and taken down by Andrew Choi. Choi, another guy at that defensive end that just does what he's supposed to do. He's gotten bigger and stronger every year, but you can count on him to be technically sound. Andrew Choi, the 6'1", 250-pound senior out of Kaiser. Nine tackles, a sack, two and a half tackles for losses here so far this young season. Fifth year in the program, and he has just gotten better and better each season. I thought I saw remnants of a new tattoo on that left arm, <laughs> a sleeve being built. Well, you live pretty close to his family. You can find out the goods on that, right? <laughs> Third down, Poffenbarger. With a QB draw, breaks a tackle, and then gets upended. That was Logan Taylor who came through like a missile. Yeah, and if you're going to hit low, hit through. And last week, they were diving on the ground, but Logan Taylor does a nice job of preventing the first down. Again, dropping back to the hook zone, reading, reacting to the quarterback run, and a really nice hit. So, punt team out. Here for a U Albany, but before they can snap it, uh, timeout taken by the University of Hawaii. We'll take a break as well. 10:37 left to go in quarter number one. Hawaii seeking win number one in 2023. They lead by three. If New Heineken Silver was a riveting Viking saga, your family tortured my first wife and stole my second favorite goat. Now you want to marry my daughter? Okay. <laughs> All the taste, no bitter endings. Heineken Silver, world-class light beer. Dear Hawaii, we're not the biggest health insurer or the oldest but we are homegrown. Driven by a profound kuleana, a privileged duty to care for Hawaii's people. What difference does kuleana make in a health insurance plan? All the difference in the world. We're UHA Health Insurance. Join us. Friday, the Crusaders are marching with a purpose and a chance to take down an OIA foe. St. Louis, Mililani, Hawaii Prep Football only on XCast, exclusively on Spectrum. Welcome back. Well, a couple of possessions, not much in the way of offense accumulated so far by U Albany. And yes, we say U Albany. They are university at 
Albany, and they prefer to be referred to as U Albany, kind of like UMass or UConn. And Interesting. so that's it's what about, we're going with. I, I assume it's all about branded, right? Because that kind of confused me, but they go by U Albany. Yeah, they are part of the uh, SUNY or State University of New York system. Obviously coming from Albany, New York, an enrollment of a little over 17,000. A long trip. When you think about their journey to play at Marshall last week, they're going to accumulate total here through two weeks of, of football, uh, over 12,000 miles. Especially early in the season, that's a lot of travel. Stephen McBride is back to receive this punt, and it is a good one. He fair catches it at the six instead of letting it bounce. 58-yard net. And so uh, the field flips, so to speak, for what his offense coming out. Well, Jordan Helley, part of the Game On crew, he called Carson Pupunu out to be his impact player, and he has already made an impact. Let's send it down to uh, Jordan, who is working the sidelines here this season. Jordan. Hey, thanks a lot, Panola. Yeah, obviously a little selfishly, right, the Maui guy and all that he has gone through this season, but making a huge play on special teams, something that Hawaii is looking to get going. Carson, as you mentioned, Kanoa playing with a heavy heart this season, losing a couple of family members. And for him and that Lahaina community, they continue to rebound, and this football program has really stepped up in the interim. Yeah, that's uh, anytime he makes a play, I think it's just going to carry a little more weight to it as you have Braden Shager unleashing it deep, looking for one of those vintage Shager bombs. He was looking the way of Stephen McBride, but overthrew him. AJ Simon was applying some of the pressure up front. Yeah, Shager not able to step up in the pocket. And that's the first time he has overthrown a deep ball. Maybe this season he's been just on the money on the deep ball, but great coverage on the upfield shoulder by the Danes cornerback. Yeah, Shager setting career highs, 355 passing yards, career highs in completions with 30 and attempts 53 in that game last week against Stanford. Here is Jonah Panoke, who has made his way back from early season injury. Remember, he was injured a good portion of 2022 as well, but it's good to see number one back out there for the Bows. It, it sure is. He catches that little kind of smoke throw screen type of action and makes some positive yards to the big body. Uh, St. Louis School. Now Shager out of the gun on third and five. He gets hit. Hit hard by Anton Junkaj. He is the team leader in sacks. Had four of them, which is a program single game record in the opener against Fordham. He gets one right there here on the road against Hawaii. Yeah, and he's coming off Hawaii's offensive left side, and I'm not sure it's the new tackle, 54, Josh Agnes. Yeah, he just gets beat. Good job of turning the corner, staying on that upfield shoulder, but it's one-on-one -on -one protection. The big guy. Number four, and they say the motor, the attention to detail, this is a sack machine thus far this season. And now Matt Shipley with his heels teasing the back of the end zone, going to be looking to punt this one away. 39-yard punt average so far this season with a long of 55. Delay a game on the offense. That penalty's half the distance to the goal. Fourth down. And that's going to make things slightly more difficult. Yeah, it makes it much more difficult because now the punter, his heels are on the almost the back line. He cannot step back. But the block point becomes even closer to the line of scrimmage. So you push from the middle here and you try to get pressure up the middle and try to block this thing. And the trajectory has to come out much higher. And a precarious situation here for Shipley. He does get it off. A low line drive punt. Jackson Parker lets it roll on the turf. Now he picks it up mid-bounce. At midfield, he's wrapped up, and he has rolled up. Chucky Hines, receiver for Hawaii on special teams there, making the tackle. A 48-yard punt and a much-needed one at that by Matt Shipley. Yeah, Thomas Sheffield really likes the speed of the 22.9 miles per hour, but you're going to see really almost an Australian type of rugby kick. Just get that ball rolling on the ground. Really a nice job by the return of being secure with the football, but watch. Again, Chucky Hines coming all the way from the right side. The gunner making the tackle. Good speed, good tackle. And so Hawaii's offense, like you Albany so far, not getting much done here in this opening quarter. 
Solid field position here for the Great Danes, and that pass incomplete in and out of the hands of Marquise Dietz, 5'10", 187-pound sophomore from Virginia Beach. A little China route, the outside guy stops at five, the inside guy can either take the seam route or the corner route. Again, a lot of drop balls early. The ball was thrown low, and that's not because of the crown of the field. He's just got to continue to drive that ball through and get it up a little bit. The total offensive numbers so far for both sides for you, Albany, 26 total yards of offense. Hawaii, zero over a couple of possessions. Yeah, Hawaii has not started fast offensively. Timmy Chang scripting the first six plays, not going the way he wanted. This is Nate Larkins. If you were to select or point out a bell cow, so to speak, of this running back stable, it is Larkins, six-foot grad student from Huntington, New York, leads the team. That was his 26th rush of the season, but came in with 108 yards on the ground. The Utah transfer, I mean, they've got a three-headed running back committee, and they like to, you know, spread it around a little bit. But so far, the offensive line of scrimmage is being won by Albany. The running game is there. Yeah, Woodell, another guy in that running back stable. And you mentioned the Utah transfer, Faisal Aiden. We saw him on a carry. Fake handoff there, and that pass was on the number intended for Julian Hicks. But JoJo Forrest, one of the guys being looked at to step up in the absence of cornerback Cam Stone here tonight. Yeah, and JoJo Forrest started all last year, so he's a veteran. Look at his pedal, right? He opens his hips a little bit outside, but then understands to drive that upfield shoulder, stay off the receiver, get his hand in the pocket. JoJo Forrest is a baller, and the fact that Cam Stone came probably the best transfer hall he has and became the starting cornerback, JoJo Forrest is a very competent third corner. So second and ten, ball at the Hawaii 41. Fake handoff again by Poffenbarger. He can run. Had a 54-yard touchdown last week against Marshall. Score another one with the legs. This one from 41 yards to the house. Zone read. And they say Johnny Football's longest run of his career was 54 yards last week. That was another one where really Hawaii did not have enough defenders on the weak side. One defender for two people. Do the math. You're going to see Seven pull that ball, and that's the defensive end of the outside edge rusher needs to stay square and keep outside leverage. You have to set the table. Hoffenbarger, just a sophomore, redshirted in 2021 at Old Dominion, transferred in the spring of 2022, and then earned the starting job last year as a freshman. The point after by John Opalco is good. And just like that, U Albany jumps ahead 7-3. Yeah, not blazing speed, right? But Jacob Ewer, the defensive coordinator, said he's not going to go 80. Well, he would have went 80 this time if he had 80 yards to run. And he shows enough speed to get around the corner. Really a nice job. And uh, Mekki Pay is the only defender on that side of the football. Again, they're going to have to go to the sidelines, draw something up, because the zone read is maybe the best running play thus far for the Danes. Jared Ambrose uh, speaks so glowingly of Reese Poffenbarger. First off, they are from the same hometown, Middleton, Maryland. So uh, both guys uh, who are from Maryland now playing or coaching in the state of New York. Uh, and Poffenbarger played at Middletown High School, which was basically a football program that Ambrose's dad, Tim, started and served as a head coach. He's considered a legend for 31 years. How about this one, though? Poffenbarger's grandfather and Ambrose's mom, well, they were once partners in a law firm. So the connections are plentiful. Yeah, Maryland is a little bit away from New York State, but you talk about one degree of separation, right? And also being called a gunslinger, quickly followed by does not throw interceptions, has not fumbled the football, and I trust him in whatever we call. Shiki Hines is the return man here for Hawaii, and he will try to forge one. Gets to the 20, break the, breaks a couple of tackles, and a flag comes out late on the play as Hines is upended at the 23. Normally flags coming out on will be on the return team. We'll have to see about this one. During the return, illegal block in the back, number 21, return team. It's a 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Justin Sinclair, and that's the safety that's playing. Well, the backup to Mekki Pay. He's the third safety in. Good football player. Good special teams player, but you cannot block in the back. And you're going to get a chance to possibly see this on the... There it is right there. See that left arm? No, that's not it. There it is right there. 
You yeah, can came see through late in the middle of your screen there. And again, mistakes putting Hawaii in bad field position. Yeah, so another less than ideal circumstance here for Hawaii's offense. It's Tylen Hines. And Tylen Hines with a flag coming out late in that one. In fact, add another piece of tissue there after the fact as Hines got about five yards, about as productive a run as we have really seen him have so far this young season, but it might be coming back. Yeah, I think this is a holding. Personal foul, face mask, number 58. Defense, Ooh. that 15 yard penalty is enforced in the dead ball spot. Automatic, first down. All right, let's see if we can catch this here. Number 58, that's Joseph Greeny. Yeah, he grabs that mask. That's very dangerous. It's going to be called every time. And... <laughs> so first and ten ball at the 30. Well, he helped along by the penalty. Now off play action. That is a strike. Pofele Ashlock still on his feet at the 20. And finally able to drag the tackler down to the 17, but we have yet another penalty flag on the play. Isaac Duffy finally putting an end to that one, but how good has Pofele Ashlock been in this, his freshman campaign? Yeah, and you know, when you talk to Cody Cook, the strength coach said that he may be the 12th or 13th linear fastest receiver out of 16. He was a fourth, really, on the depth there chart. There is no foul on the receiver. play. The result in play is a first down. But now he is the man, the man in the Mountain West Conference at least. Good job of breaking that route off, flattening it away from the safety. They're playing quarters coverage. That's the one thing that Puffelli does so well. He's a smart receiver. He understands coverage, and they have a great relationship, him and Shaver. So they pick up the flag. First down here for Hawaii in the red zone. That one is dropped. Jalen Waffle. And Waffle's had some drops during practice, during training camp. He shows all of the athleticism. But Coach Chang's constantly talking about catching the ball with your hands. And getting back to Pofele Ashlock, he kind of joked around this week. He is from Euless, Texas. Of course, his quarterback, Braden Shager, is from Dallas, Texas. He said, yeah, maybe there's a little bit of a Texas connection there that allows us to have good chemistry. Shager in trouble. Let's it fly and avoids the sack, but does get punished there as A.J. Simon once again just in his grill. Yeah, and there were two or three guys, and it didn't look like they even added. This is just basically a four-man pass rush. And look at all of those white jerseys. That cannot continue to happen. Protection issues. Anton Junkaj again, another guy who was in on the scene. So what's happening up front here for Hawaii, Rich? What do you see? Well, when we talked to Bill Nez, let, I think he's the defensive coordinator. We're talking about everybody on the staff understands pass rush. They've all coached defensive line. And these guys get mentored by all the coaches on how to rush the passer. Yeah, talking about Second. Bill Nessel, first year Not defensive half. coordinator Hawaii. for you, Albany. Timeout taken by Hawaii. They're hoping to cash in on this possession. We'll be back. Aloha. I'm tax attorney Adam Brewer. If you have a serious tax problem with the IRS or State of Hawaii, then you don't need a tax relief company. You need a tax attorney. Call or visit my website to schedule your free tax evaluation. Aloha. Living in Hawaii, it's important to have a good work-life balance, yeah? So the brewers here that make Big Wave Golden Ale have adjusted their work-life hours. Now when the surf is flat, they make a lot of Big Wave. And when the surf is mean, Cherry. No more work. Come on, guys. It's firing. Hope you stocked up. Big Wave Golden Ale from Kona Brewing, Hawaii. Go where the contractors go. I've been doing business with them for 40 years. Hardware Hawaii never makes me feel disposable. Everybody says hello when you walk in. And I love this place. I think it's important for me to support you guys because you guys supported me. And uh, that's hard to find nowadays. Hardware Hawaii in Koloa, Kailua, Kapolei, Mapunapuna. Contractor's choice. Aloha, I'm tax attorney Adam Brewer. If you have a serious tax problem with the IRS or State of Hawaii, then you don't need a tax relief company. You need a tax attorney. Call or visit my website to schedule your free tax evaluation. 
Don't miss a second of the action. Watch Spectrum Sports on the go. The Spectrum News app has the local sports you love and the news and weather that matter most to you. Download the Spectrum News app today on your favorite devices. Well, the fans made their way to Clarence T.C. Ching Athletic Complex. Despite some of the rains that we had earlier in the evening, a little bit of a wind factor here tonight as well, but they seem to be enjoying themselves, and they certainly enjoy if Hawaii can cash in on what has been their best offensive drive so far of the game. Third and ten in the red zone. Shager, they're going to try to run a screen. It's picked off. Intercepted by Dylan Kelly. Almost zero coverage right for across man. And then the backer now read the middle screen. And then just makes the play on the football. You see Shager trying to set up that middle screen, and that's the solo Vipulu, and really gets in the way of Kayana DeCambra. It was not timed up well. There was some contact amongst offensive players. Good play for the defense. Dylan Kelly who was the team leader coming in with 24 tackles on the year, had a team-high 12 last week against Marshall, picking off Shager for what is Braden Shager's third interception of the season. And also two tackles for a loss. And so getting back to work offensively, the Great Danes, it's Faisal Aiden on the carry, gets past the 20. John Tui Tupo among the black shirts there. And so if you Albany didn't have Hawaii's attention at the beginning of the game, Rich, they most certainly do now. They have it. And I think it, this is driving Coach Chen crazy in terms of red zone inefficiency. They've had a number of big plays throughout the first three games, but they have to cash in in the red zone. Second and seven. The throw to the near side off the mark. Closest receiver was Brevin Easton. Yeah, and, and it's coming out of Poffenbarger's hands. Well, it's spinning, but the timing seems to be a little bit off with the wide receivers. Yeah, Poffenbarger, a Coastal Athletic Association preseason honorable mention. Also, Walter Payton Award watch list. Walter Payton Award given to the top player in the FCS football championship subdivision. Hasn't necessarily started this game red hot. But has been victimized by some drops. That one gets home as Caden Birdie is able to pull it in. Birdie, who actually spent 2022 at Marshall, played one game or had one appearance there, makes the catch. Yeah, and understanding, Birdie, where the first down markers are, where the chains are, where to hook up that route and slide away from the defender. That ball was well thrown. So that's enough to get the first down here for you, Albany. Your thoughts here on what we're seeing, particularly in the battle on the line of scrimmage from both sides. Well, offensively, they're struggling Hawaii on the offensive line. Defensively, there's some push up front, but there are some seams in the running game, and there's not a lot of pressure this far. Oh, they're going to check to make sure that the end of that last play, the spot where the ball was placed, was appropriate and that it was actually a first down. So they're going to review this. That might have come from up, up above. And so interesting that puts a halt to the action because uh, that's one of the new rules, right, in timing here this season. A first down that's inbounds, the clock will run with the exception of the last two minutes in each half. Yeah, and the whole game on crew, I think three out of four. RJ didn't really like the new rule, but those are other guys that want to get home early and have a shorter game. The ruling on the field stands. First down. More commercials, you know, Rob DeMello, Jordan Helle. I'm surprised with Jordan being an offensive guy that he actually wants to shorten the game, shorten the amount of plays. All right, so they reviewed it. They confirmed that it was a first down. It looks kind of questionable from that angle. Yeah, it does, and that's why you want to knock players back, but it's the forward progress, right? It's the momentum. It's where the ball got to its furthest point. Uh, nonetheless, a first and ten here, under five and a half minutes to play in this opening quarter. Offenbarger 
to the far sideline, and that one is another strike. This one caught by Marquise Dietz, and then able to initiate a couple of moves to get extra yardage. Yeah, and it's okay to give up a speed break out, especially when you have inside leverage playing quarters, thirds, on man comes. But you got to make the tackle, right? That's 12 personnel, two tight ends. You got a Z and an X receiver. You're just hooking up, and then making the opponent miss the tackle. That's where you get on your defensive backs when it comes to watching the film. 18-yard connection there for U Albany, and they're moving the ball a bit here on this possession, already up 7-3. Poffenbarger, that's another completion. This time it's Levi Wentz. Gotta be careful not throwing him down out of bounds. That could be a personal foul. Again, play smart. You see a little jawing after the play as well. Yeah, Nate's a good-looking receiver, right? You talk about size, you talk about length, good hands. Yeah, 6'2", a little over 200 pounds. That's the big-time receiver at the FCS. Yeah, another guy who started his collegiate career at Old Dominion, spent the previous two years there, played in a total of three games. A little play action, Poffenbarger with all kinds of time, throwing it downfield. It's picked off, intercepted by Elijah Palmer, the Bishop Gorman product. Another guy being relied upon here with some of the mixing and matching with players who were out here to start this game or out for this game. And he comes up big yeah, with little, his first INT. Yeah, and a lot of offense call this the Cadillac, right? Everything is going to the right, and the receiver comes all the way back across the field. But you know what? You're not going to outsmart Elijah Palmer. That kid went to Bishop Gorman. He was coached up. And if he was a little bit taller, he'd be playing at a power five type of school. Last week, led the... I think he had eight tackles last week. Good hitting, good instincts, and now he's showing the ability to play the ball in the air. Elijah Palmer, big play. Yeah, actually, to be exact, seven tackles, but all solo tackles in what was his first career start last week against Stanford. And most of those tackles were off of some pad popping hits as this is a handoff to Hines, and Hines has room to run, gets across the 40, and finally iced out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Easily the best run of the season for Tylen Hines. Yeah, and he's been pressing, right, the first couple of games, and there has not been a lot of holes in that inside-outside zone. But now you're facing a different type of opponent. 18 yards on that run, and you see the speed, you see the shiftiness, and the ability to run through contact. 18-yard run there for Tylen Hines. And Hawaii gets sparked here by that pick by Elijah Palmer. That's a completion to Jonah Panoke, the 6'1", 200-pound senior. Able to get in on the action once more. And you mentioned seeing when I talked to Jonah, he actually has another year eligibility. And that's why I don't talk about seniors, juniors, because you never <laughs> you know never now know. with COVID, red shirt, gray shirts. But Panoki understands this offense as well as anyone. Now they go the other side. That's McBride. And McBride trying to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. But nothing doing. Bill Hackett, the cornerback, 5'7", senior. Hackett fought through the block of Kowali Nishigaya, right? Nishigaya is low center of gravity at five foot six inches tall. Tough guy, but a real nice job of shock and awe when you're playing off the stock block of the diminutive wide receiver. Second and 11. Sager gonna throw to the far side, and is it caught? Yes, they will say. Keeping his feet inbounds just long enough with Stephen McBride, the 6'1", 165-pound senior from Napoleonville, Louisiana, transfer from Kansas. And he is tied along with Pofele Ash Ashlock uh, for the team lead in touchdown catches so far this year. And that's an NFL type of catch. I'm not sure he has the two feet in, but you talk about extending horizontally. Great hands, great ball placement. And here's another run, and here he is, Najee bryant Lele, making his return, injured during training camp, was finally cleared to play here this week, and my, can he be a boost for this running game for Hawaii that has been so anemic in the first two weeks. Yeah, 5'10", 225 pounds of power running, they needed Najee bryant Lele. Hawaii well, going tempo here, Rich. And that pass gets to Walpole. And he's able to jump forward close to another first down. I think they're going to give him first down yardage. That one was awfully close to getting snatched out of the air by the defense. Yeah, and Bill Nessa talked about that, right? It looks like you're covering receivers downfield the first two games in Shaker's ability to put that ball in a tight window. 
Here's Brian Lele, they call him Mojo. And he gets tripped up at the line of scrimmage there. This is a guy who played in 10 games last year. 56 rushes for 245 yards and three TDs. He was kind of the other back, if you will, a bit of an off-speed at times uh, to DJ Parson. Yeah, and Landon Sims tried to be that guy early, right, as they're waiting for Bryant to come back from his injury, but they need that power. They need that inside running game, and it starts with that leaky Tanavasa, the center. Then you obviously you have Mo Ta'ala as well as Sergio Morisal, and Maurice Ta'ala is the strongest player on this football team. Inside zone type of block in. Good job of the little guy. Back squats 500 pounds running with the shoulders low to the ground. And that is perhaps what people were envisioning going into the season out of the backfield, that thunder and lightning type of combo of Najee Brian Lele and Tylen Hines. Here's Najee Lele off of the fake handoff, the throw to the end zone. It's Jonah Pinoke in for six, and Hawaii jumps in front. Pinocchi being injured, it must have hurt the last two games. Not to be able to help his teammates. He's one of the leaders. He's one of the guys that coined the phrase brotherhood. And you're going to see the big receiver come on that pick route, rub route, quick slant from the X receiver position. Good hands, way to post up in the paint, Jonah Pinocchi. And that is good to see. Jonah Pinocchi, who missed six games in 2022, collarbone injury. Got off to such a good start. The kick by Shipley. The point after is good. And Hawaii, with nine seconds left here in the first quarter, has a 10-7 lead. Braden Shager with his seventh touchdown pass of the season and the first TD reception for number one, Jonah Pinoke. Yeah, Timmy Chan told us, right, we go two by two, we're balanced, there's going to be a lot of throw. We go three by one, that's going to be more of a run set. I'm going to script the first six plays, and then we're going to try to go some tempo. It hasn't worked out quite like he has wanted, but you know what? That's a positive drive, and it's capped off by Jonah Pinoke, one of, to me, the fabric of what makes this offense the ability to become special. See the drive, nine plays, 74 yards, three minutes, 47 seconds capped by the four-yard TD hookup, Braden Shager to Jonah Pinoke. So that one looked a lot more like it, and of course it was sparked by the Elijah Palmer interception to set things up. Yeah, and points off of turnovers, right? That's the first turnover for the Rainbow Warriors defense, and that has to happen by playing fast. They cannot be confused. They have to read and react, and that's how you win games on defense is take the ball away, give it to your offense, give them that those extra possessions. Yeah, how about the first turnover produced by this Hawaii defense this season? How about the first turnover committed by the UAlbany offense? this season. And the ensuing kickoff goes through the end zone. So Great Dane's offense to take the field. Nine seconds remaining here in the first stanza. So it appeared as though you, Albany, never worse for wear from the travel here, playing at Marshall last week, coming all the way out to the islands. They did come earlier in the week. They flew out on Tuesday. They made a trip of it. And they said, hey, look, you know, we would be uh, uh, behaving improperly as coaches if we did not allow for our players to have some of the fun in the sun that is available uh, here in the islands. They also visited Pearl Harbor, said that that was uh, a, a wonderful experience, that the players had a team discussion after to talk about the, the impact of, of seeing that and, and understanding the history behind it. And so they have made a trip out of it. They did not look at all intimidated when they took the field. But Hawaii maybe has awakened a little bit. And they lead 10-7 here, going into quarter number two. Since we were little, we were inseparable. We shared everything. And anything new, we tried together. After a few hits of my vape, I decided it wasn't for me. She promised to stop, but it quickly became a part of her. Now I wish we never vaped, because it feels like it's my fault she's hooked. Sharing vapes means sharing addiction. Learn the risks at escapethevapehawaii.com. 
Saturday. It's one of the biggest games of the year. The Red Raiders defend Hawaii to battle one of the best in the country. St. John Bosco, Kahuku, only on OC16, exclusively on Spectrum. You're watching Spectrum Sports. In next week's episode of Ultimate Fan, it's finally a new season. First, we'll be in Gunma to enjoy a delicious curry lunch. Then we'll be taking the Hawaii people to enjoy a shippoyaki and tie-dyeing experience. Ichigo gari ga tottemo tanoshisou deshita. Skyla mo oishisou ni tabetsuta ne. And finally, we'll be having an awesome deluxe buffet dinner. So follow me so you can experience Japan like you've never, never done, done before. before. The thrill of watching University of Hawaii and local high school sports is available like never before. Catch your favorite games on television, stream them online, or even watch on the go with an incredible mobile app. Your sports watching experience is elevated to new heights because no matter where you are or what device you're using, the excitement is right at your fingertips with Spectrum Sports and Spectrum OC16. At Spectrum News, we're committed to strengthening the fabric of local communities. Watch your favorite local sports on Spectrum Sports and OC16. Get on-demand weather forecasts and the latest news 24-7. Now available on your favorite devices. Spectrum News, your community connection. There's a look at second-year head coach Timmy Chang. He was talking all week about how he just does not like to lose. He used the word hate. He says, I hate losing. Uh, particularly, I think it's made more painful, Rich, right, when you lose in games that you feel like had your team taken care of some of the details, whether it's technique, penalties, whatever it may be, those are games that were actually winnable for Hawaii. Yeah, the details, right? You talked about the penalties, the miscues, but it's those five or six plays that normally decide the outcome of a football game. And then we talked about the belief system. They've got to believe. Somebody has to step up and say, I'm going to make this play. So quarter number two begins, and the handoff is Nate Larkins. And he gets forward for about five yards. <laughs> inside zone action and again rainbow warriors in the secondary mostly tackling to me too low to the ground they've got to wrap up they've got to square themselves up they've got to come to balance you see the rushing yards differential reverse the other way in favor of hawaii in the passing yards category total offense hawaii finally finding some offense in the latter portion of that first period Timeout taken by you, Albany. So First, we'll take one George as well. Out of half. Not Albany. even a minute into quarter number two. Or what? Yep, by three. When my brother was eight, he was diagnosed with aplastic anemia, and he needed a bone marrow transplant. When they ask you if you're willing to help save your brother's life, the answer is yes. His battle was one of the reasons why I decided to go into medicine. As a physician, my number one priority is to take care of my patients and help with their health. And HMSA has been an integral part of helping me do that. Go where the contractors go. I'm Hal. I'm Jerry. I'm Kay Hal. We got your lumber. We've got your hardware. Bring your lumber list. Get a quote from us. We've got you covered. Bring me your blueprint. Get a quote from us. We love our customers. Hardware Hawaii. In Koloa, Kailua, Kapolei, Mapunapuna. Contractor's choice. Gather up, team. You just signed up for Medicare. But what about your prescription drug plan? Even if you're not taking meds now, you might in the future. Nobody waits for a car crash to get auto insurance. Sign up now to avoid late penalties. Is drug coverage expensive? If qualified, help is available to offset costs. But you need to find out how. Hawaii SHIP educates all about Medicare through free, unbiased, local counseling. Their team will keep you ahead of the game. Don't wait. Call Hawaii SHIP today. <laughs> Welcome back here at Clarence T.C. Ching Stadium. Of course, the expanded stadium. Hawaii up 10-7 here. 
as we are less than a minute into quarter number two. Uh, Rich, we were talking prior to that timeout about the details, right? The small things, some of the self-inflicted wounds, penalties, ill-timed mistakes by Hawaii through the first two weeks. Uh, we talked to Coach Chang about that through the week, and he says, hey, look, we have to in some ways kind of overcoach those things. What, what does he mean by that? Well, he means you, it's the details, right? It's when you come out to practice doing the little things. When you're talking about tackling with the right shoulder, you're not using the crown of your helmet. You're lining up on sides. You, you just got to be cognizant of how important it is to play as clean. There's no such thing as a perfect game, but really important to be have less penalties. That was a good looking throw there. Pitch and catch, Poffenbarger to Birdie. Really like a simple three to five step drop. The out again, most corners, depending upon the split of the wide receiver, will keep inside leverage, making that difficult throw possibly possible if you have the arm strength, if you have the accuracy. Birdie already three catches for 30 yards. And off here, Larkins, a couple of shifty moves. And it's wrapped up initially by Peter Manuma. Manuma, the six foot sophomore out of Campbell High School, coming into this game with nine tackles, one and a half tackles for losses. Yeah, and one of the things defensively, right, you have to be good on first down. You see the line slanting, right? Back has good patience, and then you see in the third level, and you're seeing guys trying to rip that ball out. But you got to see guys trying to knock that pile backwards, not letting the running back bleed for yardage. Second and four is an easy down to call for an offensive play call. So second and they'll call it three officially here for you, Alden. Keep it on the ground, showing some confidence in that running game. But this time, Hawaii able to blow it up. That was Logan Taylor once again at the point of contact. Yeah, good job. And also Foy Sela, right? Also the number 98 doing a nice job on that three technique inside. But you're right. Logan Taylor plays downhill, and he does a nice job. Sometimes it's called in terms of run stunts, and sometimes it's just reaction, reading your keys and playing fast. What he did last year, the end of last season, in place of the injured Isaiah Tufanga, became the first Hawaii player in 21 years with six straight double-digit tackle games. And I think that was Jacob Espial way back that also had that. Deep throw by Poffenbarger, had a man behind the defense, at least by half a step, but he overthrows Brevin Easton. Good coverage and on the Brown. coverage there, Caleb Brown. Yeah, Brown is also one of those guys that's long, linear, really good hips, pretty good man coverage type of corner. Butler Community College in El Dorado, Kansas. I think he was the one that dropped that interception against Vanderbilt, but had made a nice play, but has to secure that football. Turnovers are so important to him. So Tyler Pastula on the punt. Back is Stephen McBride. And it's going to take a U Albany bounce and roll all the way inside the 10. All right, well, while there's a break in the action, let's send it down to Jordan Helley. Jordan, what you got? He's on our one. Obviously, right for this University of Hawaii team was going to be to push the tempo. We saw that on that last drive, resulted in points down in the red zone. The message on the sideline from every base single offensive position coach basically was to stay on the gas. We saw the line changes for the receivers. Expect more of that here on this drive. Thanks a lot, Jordan. Under 12 minutes to play here in the first half. Yeah, and I think protection is the biggest issue, right? Sometimes last week versus Stanford, Shager held the ball too long. Sometimes it was the running back in protection. Sometimes it's just the edges, the two tackles, who have physically the toughest job on that offensive line. So ball was ruled officially down at about the 11. This throw is complete to Nick Senecal. And Nick Senecal making his first catch of the game, his second catch of the season he had eight receptions for just under 100 yards last year yeah and blocking out on the perimeter number 87 doing a nice job and Senegal the Canadian they could doing a nice job of picking up positive yardage but Devin Tawafea nice job throw has a man for a moment but it's picked off intercepted and taken back to the house by Larry Walker Jr. 35-yard INT TD. Good job of the safety and quarters overlapping the outside third of the football field. Shager, again, has to put a little bit more zip on that. All right. 
not throw it to that receiver. That ball hung up in the air just a little too long for a guy who has a cannon. Shager not happy with that decision. Second pick of the night for Shager, fourth of the season. And now John Opalco on for the PAT. So we have gone seesaw here in this game so far. Hawaii and U Albany. And the snap and catch wasn't totally clean, but the hold was in place in time for Opalco to put it through. Pick six. Larry Walker. U Albany up four. Aloha Maui, especially to the people of Lahaina. Please know that our hearts and our prayers are with you. I was born and raised in Lahaina, and we lost our family home to the fire. Between myself, my cousins, their kids, we lost 10 family homes. And I know some of you lost loved ones, and so did we. And because of this devastation, I have decided to take on cases to seek compensation for the victims of this fire. It will be a long road to rebuild Lahaina, but my roots are firmly planted in Lahaina Strong, and I will do whatever I can to help the people rebuild this town. So if you've been injured, displaced, or lost your home, please call us. We can help you. shortage of star power here as two of the best in the state tangled one more time. Iolani Kamehameha ILH Girls Volleyball only on OC16 exclusively on Spectrum. Well, there's a look at Larry Walker Jr. made the big play there. 5'11 senior out of the state of Pennsylvania. Fifth year with the program. Has played in or started every game of his career. And he comes up with a 35-yard interception and sprint back to the end zone. 14-10, U Albany up here. And they're looking like a confident bunch, Rich. They are. All the way from Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. And you're exactly right, Kano. When you look at what they've done defensively, take the ball away two times. Offensively, find some success in the running game as well as the quarterback run. And then even playing well on special teams they're a confident bunch and you cannot continue to let them hang around but they're showing they're athletically at least equal thus far there's Chucky Hines into the turn game he's going to try to forge a return gets across the 25 and will be brought down at about the 29 yard line this crowd appears to be somewhat stunned here because you Albany we mentioned the game they gave Marshall last week they felt like they let that one go and they're looking like a team that is very much intent on competing with this FBS opponent on the docket tonight. Starts with being fundamentally sound. This is a well-coached team. This is an upper-level FCS football program, as we talked about. To be able to compete with FBS Marshall all the way into the third quarter, that was an impressive game last night. So Hawaii getting to work. The handoff is to Jordan Johnson. In his first carry of the season, 5'9", sophomore from Dallas, Texas. Again, this expanding stable of running backs now we're seeing tonight from the Rainbow Warriors. Might even get a chance to look at number 21, David Cordero. You're right, there's a plethora of running backs. Good to see some of these guys enter the game. But we do see Maurice Ta'ala, who had made his way back after suffering from an ailment. Didn't play against Stanford last week. But he is slow to get up. And, and this would be a huge loss. Not only is he their strongest player, but that creates that physicality you need in that inside running game. Yeah, he's the right guard for Hawaii. Staying with oh, his block, it's rolled got up. Got rolled up on on that right side. And that is <clears throat> the danger of battling in the trenches as an offensive lineman. Yeah, and that's why a lot of those guys wear the knee braces just for that extra protection. Ta'ala from Owa American Samoa. 
Fang Itua High School. He, of course, is the younger brother of former UH defensive lineman Blessman Ta'ala. When you're that big, can you walk gingerly? It seems like, you know, he's putting a little weight, a little pressure. Sometimes they won't put any pressure, so that's a good sign. Yeah, we hope that Mo is all right. I mentioned his brother Blessman, who this past offseason was the number one pick in the CFL Global Draft taken by Ottawa. Then you had Pene Pavihi, former UH linebacker, who was taken in the number four spot just a few picks later. I thought Blessman Ta'ala has been one of the most consistent defensive linemen we've seen in a decade or so. So second and six. Given once again to Johnson. It'll be wrapped up and brought down by Bill Hackett after a short game. Yeah, Hawaii's still trying to get that running game going. They've had a little bit of success, but they need continued success. Linemen going to that second level. Patience by running backs, finding where that crease, where that hole is, and then exploding upfield. So you saw number 77 in that right guard spot. That's Harasi Mose, 6'5, 370 pound senior out of St. Louis. They're the biggest player on the roster the first couple of weeks. They were just trying to get him in shape, lose some weight. But uh, he has been around the program a long time, and he does weigh 370 pounds. He had another big body, Solo Vaipulu, lining up in the backfield next to Shager. But UH calls a timeout prior to the snap. Third and final. And so we'll take a half. break as well. Still 10.05 to go in the first half. Hawaii is trailing against FCSU Albany. The way back from injury is tough, but help from the right people can make all the difference. For 12 years, Venture Physical Therapy has brought Maui and Lanai our very best with a person-first, patient-second approach. And we're now extending that to Molokai, too. We've several patient-safe options, including at our clinic, in-home services, as well as telehealth sessions statewide. We may not take ourselves very seriously. Serious, we save for your recovery. Venture Physical Therapy. Call today for the best team ever on your way back from injury. In Hawaii, a healthy smile shows love for a family. It appreciates the culture of its community. It builds partnerships, conveying ideas and aloha. Our smiles preserve what makes us local and what makes Hawaii home. HCS preserved its local roots and the healthy smiles of Hawaii for 60 years. Our mission is more than preserving oral health. It's preserving happy and healthy lives. HCS, live well, smile more. You know, I enjoy a good laugh, but our kupuna being swindled is no joke. Scammers target seniors daily. There's Medicare fraud, stealing identities, and life savings. That's where SMP Hawaii comes in, a free helpline with trained local counselors. Know the facts? Call them back. If you're feeling pressured, call SMP Hawaii and get the truth. Join, Join the, the fight. fight. SMP Hawaii needs volunteers. Receive training, stay informed, and keep Hawaii safe. Call or visit our site to learn more. Welcome back. Time out taken by Hawaii. There's the Rainbow Warriors playing from behind against U Albany. Just so you know, U Albany's last win over an FBS team was against Buffalo in 2016. And hey, look, there is a ton of football to be played tonight. But just throwing some of this out there for Hawaii. Their last loss against an FCS team. You got to go all the way back to the 2000 season opener against Portland State. 45-20, the final there. Um, Rich, that I believe you were that uh, coaching that staff, staff, and that yeah. was a huge upset. We did not finish the year well after coming off the greatest turnaround in NCAA history. It's a good-looking throw by Shager, trying to bounce back from the pick six. And delivers one on a rope to Stephen McBride. Yeah, that ball is spinning, coming out of there with a good platform, a good drive by Shager. Stephen McBride, we mentioned from Napoleonville, Louisiana, also the same hometown as former Rainbow Wahine volleyball great Kim Willoughby. In fact, they are cousins. Kim Willoughby, you talk about an athlete. God, she was explosive. And the whistles will blow this one dead. We have some movement on the offensive line. Draw the snap, false start, number 86. Offense, five yard penalty, still first down. And when it called against Pofele Ashlock. Yeah, he flinches. He's not lined up properly. You check with the 
side judge to make sure, and it looked like he wanted to back up a little bit to make sure he was eligible. You cannot cap, which means cover up the inside receiver. Formation penalties should not happen. Those are administrative things. Oh, here's a draw. They try to get it to Solo Vaipulu. He's able to walk his way forward for a few. Interesting call, you know, on long yardage, although we've seen him rumble the opening game of the season. Not great ball security, but he does have the ability to make something out of nothing, but not on that particular play. Yeah, caught that screen pass, remember, went 23 yards, fumbled right before the goal line. Oh, he would end up throwing an interception in the end zone. One of the key mistakes that may have cost them that game against Vanderbilt is Jordan Johnson getting a healthy amount of carries here in this second quarter. Excellent tackle in the secondary. Johnson had something. You saw a flash as he accelerated horizontally. Watch right here. He sticks that left foot in the ground right there. Shows really good hips, good speed, good quickness. Isaac Duffy on the tackle. Duffy, you mentioned from Binghamton, New York, a transfer from NC State. 5'8", 185-pound grad student. Shager, oh, it's a jailbreak, and he goes down. At A.J. Simon, who has just been bothering Shager all game long so far, gets home. Yeah, and it wasn't just A.J. You mentioned jailbreak. There are protection issues, and I'm sure Coach Roman Sopolo, as well as Timmy Chang, will hopefully figure this out. The right tackle, Kayana DeCambra, just gets beat clean. Mostly doing a nice job inside. You can also see Solo doing a nice job stepping up in there. But you got to be solid on the tackle, especially if you're running 10 personnel, especially if you want to be a run and shoot offense. There's no tight end. There's only one back in the backfield. Five man protection. Late substitution for Hawaii, and they don't get the snap off. They got to delay a game on what was fourth and delay 20. Delay game on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. And so you see the timeout situation. U Albany still with two timeouts. Hawaii without a timeout. Yeah, normally you would have taken a timeout if you had one in that scenario, other than giving up the five yards. So fourth and 25, and here's Shipley once again being asked to try to flip the field somehow. Again, that sort of Aussie football style punt. And it gets a great roll, will trickle out of bounds at the 25-yard line on the other side. 46 yards off the toe of Shipley, but we do have a penalty flag at midfield. Yeah, and Shipley struggled, right? The high snap the first game against Vanderbilt. He also had a uh, shank last week against Stanford, but he said he's not too comfortable with that Australian style. That looked like he had some comfortability because that was a good punt. After the play was over, a sportsmanlike conduct, number 58, kicking team. It's a 15-yard penalty from the dead ball spot. The first down and 10. Albany, there's number 58, first and sportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. I don't know. that They call that a Kual Pehopa? That's defense stays. I don't think he's on the punt return yeah, it, team. Yeah, it's likely uh, Zen Sotelo. Yeah. Maybe a guy that's an up back. Part of the double in the, number in the protection. dynamic. Yeah, yeah both teams so many with uh, the double number rosters but I think you're correct you Albany offensively now taking the field and they have taken the air out of this field as the band tries to play a little bit of support here for the Rainbow Warriors but you look at body language sideline to sideline you look at the Great Danes they are much smaller in number on that sideline but they are looking enthusiastic and pumped up they look like they feel like they are much not only in this battle, but maybe even with the advantage in this battle. Right? Yeah, they definitely so far have the advantage, both, I think, schematically, technically, less miscues. They are the superior football team right now, and there's a lot of football to be played, and seven minutes and six seconds left in the second quarter. You have a halftime adjustments to make, but Hawaii has to get something going, and sometimes that starts defensively with a takeaway. And they finally got one, courtesy Elijah Palmer, earlier in this half. Robin puts it on the ground, and it is Faisal Aiden, who is rudely met. And immediately, 
he is brought down, and it was Sauce. Daniel, Daniel Sauce Williams. Sauce Williams. Williams. 330. Yeah, and, and right, low center of gravity, plays low. Then you see Jonah Kahavai, Welch as well. And then you see 16, who seems to come downhill consistently, Logan Taylor. Sauce Williams from San Antonio, Texas, transfer from Trinity Valley Community College. Third and 10 here for you, Alden. Poffenbarger to the near side, and he overthrows the target. It was Marquise Dietz. Twice stunting inside. The three technique and the zero technique. Applying a little bit of pressure, good coverage downfield, and that's sometimes that type of three and out. Getting the football back is sometimes all you can do on defense unless you get that turnover. Good look there at Jared Ambrose, associate head coach, offensive coordinator, acting head coach tonight with Greg Catuso not able to make the trip due to an illness. And that's Stephen McBride in punt return. He was able to make the squeeze and then runs out of bounds. Decent field position here on this possession for Hawaii, but they have 617 to play here, Rich. And we talked about the discipline factor, right? Timmy Chang saying, hey, look, we have to be detail-oriented. We saw an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty hurt them moments ago. We have seen some ill-timed mistakes again. Jake Yoro, defensive coordinator, said, hey, look, some of our penalties have been effort penalties, even the targeting penalties. He said those weren't malicious plays. They weren't nefarious. There wasn't any ill will behind them. He said we can accept some of those. We still have to be better and more detail and attention oriented. Uh, but it's happening again tonight. Yeah, it, it certainly is, right? Kuali Nishigai are out of that trips formation, runs that double out, that does a nice job of separating. But you're exactly right. You talk about Hawaii has no timeouts left. They've had multiple penalties, untimely type of penalties, and there's been some breakdowns. Oh, here is Najee Brian Lele. He gets some running room, and he gets flipped up. 40 and he brings another dimension to this running attack he certainly does right when you're when you're that type of running back that has a 225 type of frame really good job protecting the football but a good job of getting north and south 17 yard run there but what you're running tempo here 32 yards rushing already for Najee Bryant today in his return his a lot of attention being given to number 86 for obvious reasons the first UH receiver in the first two games of the season to go back to back 100 yards since 2018. That was John Ursua. Yeah, and he kind of reminds me right in the slot of a Greg Salas type of body. 6'1, 6'2, you know, about 185 pounds when Greg was a freshman. Much more productive, much more involved in the offense. He has a chance to be a great one if he continues this type of. Uh, elevation in terms of the spectrum. Greg Sal is one of the guys being honored tonight. Legends of the run and shoot here at the stadium as Solo Vipulu hauls in the screen pass and he gets forward for about nine yards. Yeah, I think that was more of a screen than the shovel. It kind of reminded me a little bit of Reagan Maui'a, West Kali Kipi, our Nate Ilawa type of shovel pass. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 58, defense. The 15 yard pillar is enforced and they end of the run. Automatic. First down. Well, that one goes against Joseph Greeny, 6'3 grad student, 280 pounds. Good job of setting his feet, and that's definitely a middle screen. Lineman can go downfield, get to that second level. The big guy rumbling. Joseph Greeny's brother Thomas was a standout tight end for the Great Danes. In fact, last season signed with the Browns as an undrafted free agent. Here's the throw to the end zone by Shager. And not a lot of room over there for Alex Perry. Number 88, 6'5", redshirt freshman target, but Bill Hackett had him blanketed. Yeah, and that's almost textbook, right? You press out, there's some hand battling going on, but as long as you get your head back, you have the right to that football as you press out. But I, I do like this Alex Perry. When you talk about 6'5", legitimately, 6'4", and 7'8", you talk about catching radius, speed. He's becoming a very productive receiver. And off to Jordan Johnson. Stepping up immediately was Ori John Charles. 
six one two hundred four pound junior. He had stops at Louisville and Maine prior to matriculating over to U Albany. Yeah, he's that big physical type of guy you want setting that edge, staying square, coming to balance, wrapping up. So third and eight here for Hawaii. How important is this possession right now? Four minutes now, under four minutes to go in the second quarter. No, it's huge. Hawaii needs to get the momentum back. They need to get them, have a mojo, have some confidence. That swagger needs to come back, and you do that by executing. Play action. Shager looking to throw to the end zone. Has a man and is caught. McBride. I think he's in, but there's... Holding number zero. Offense. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay third down. No catch or no catch. The hold brings it back. been one worthy of a review perhaps yeah, but possibly was out it didn't matter Zolo, Zolo Vipulu called for the holding you see Vipulu playing at H position just grabbing the shoulder pad the former guard who weighs 269 pounds trying to set that edge Solo's got to keep his hands inside the breastplate yeah. team best 43 career starts a left guard and a right guard and another penalty flag False start, number 54, offense, five-yard penalty, stay third down. This time it's the left tackle, Josh Atkins. Yeah, and the book on Vipulu is he started off as a guard during COVID, lost a whole bunch of weight, and then you see 54 right there, Josh Atkins moved prior to the snap. Again, hold your water, as an offensive line coach would say. Unable to gain weight to play that interior guard position, made him an H back, made him a running back. Shaker looking to throw. As a man, it's McBride, it's caught. Touchdown. All's well that ends well on that drive for the Rainbow Warriors. 30 yards. Shager to McBride. Shager a bomb, right? And you talk about McBride. Did a little hesitation, a little hezzy, as they call it. And then accelerated vertically. Does a nice job. Really well. Good ball placement. McBride's a veteran type of receiver who has that linear speed and the ability to make the big play. McBride's team best fourth TD catch of the season. And it vaults Hawaii in front in what has been a back-and-forth battle. Shipley able to knock through the PAT. 3.34 left to play in the first half. Shager, primary receiver. He sees man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. Tell you what, McBride can play. He, he's going to be a guy all season long that we're going to be talking about. He's not that big, about 165 pounds, but he understands how to beat people on releases, how to gain leverage, and how to accelerate to the football and catch it at the highest point. And how crude of a band-aid was that touchdown pass for what was transpiring on that possession for Hawaii prior? You look at the penalties throughout the game now, Hawaii, six penalties for 46 yards, but they've had, again, some ill-timed miscues. That touchdown pass made it look a lot rosier. No question about it. Much needed. Shager with the two interceptions in the first half needs to gain his confidence back. Offensive line, good job on protection. It all kind of plays out, right? That's why this is the ultimate team sport, is you need to protect. You need your quarterback to have the proper read. You need a receiver that can separate. The ensuing kick taken by Griffin Woodell inside the goal line he tries to return it out and will be stopped shy of the 20. better off just taking it at the 25 you don't have to work on it in practice 
And so a couple of Hawaii players on special teams helping to make the play. Jemai Otis, number 54. He also had for Hawaii number 13, Caleb Brown. Yeah, Otis, uh, again, from Bishop Gorman, linebacker that we're going to be talking a lot about the next three, four years because he's a football player. So the Great Danes got 328 to try to see if they can strike back. And it is a running play, Nate Larkins. Larkins. He's able to lay a little bit of punishment of his own. Noah Kemma stepping up to make the initial hit. That little counter OH, right? So you got a counter move by the running back. You have the H back coming across the formation, trying to kick out, adding an extra gap to that side of the line of scrimmage. Good job by Noah Kemma. We had the Women's U.S. Open final earlier today. Coco Golf, congratulations, first uh, major victory. Um, this has kind of looked like a tennis match so far. A lot of volleying back and forth. The handoff here to Larkin. He dives forward for a few. I was wondering where you're going with that <laughs> one, but now I got gotcha. you. <laughs> we took the scenic route there. Sometimes it's going back and forth with like long plays. It hasn't been really like that, but it's going back and forth in terms of scoring. So third and two here for you, Albany. Big play, obviously, defensively. Offenbarger, 5 for 14 for 42 yards. They have been doing a lot of this, running the football right into the teeth of the Hawaii defense. Surprised by the level of success in the running game for the Great Danes? Yes, I'm surprised, especially the interior type of inside zones. When you have John Tui Tupo at six foot four, almost 300 pounds, when you have Kuao Pehopa, those two guys need to really just neutralize any of the inside running game because you have a linebacker 16, Logan Taylor, that comes downhill. Too much push up front. 99 yards as a team on the ground here for you, Albany. They saw Aiden, the ball carrier. They saw Aiden on the carry there. Doesn't get much. And, and you know what kind of stands out is remember when the acting head coach was talking about Scott Hausman. He does not have a D1 type of body, the center. His legs aren't that big. His arms aren't that big. He does not look like that guy, but he's leading the charge on those inside type of runs. And he's only coming into the game at 6'3", about 295 pounds. Too much resistance up the middle. Logan Taylor was in on that. Jonah Kahavai Welch may have been the first to the scene. Under a minute to play here in the first half. Four man front. You're going to see again. There's 16, and there's Jonah Kahavai Welch on the inside type of stunt from that defensive end position. Third and eight. Poffenbarger hit as he lets it go, and he gets it to the receiver. The target was Julian Hicks, a completion that will be enough for a first down, and he gets out of bounds. Yeah, and University of Albany slid their offensive line. Nobody picked up Kahavai Welch coming off the left defensive front, and you're going to see him just get a good foot, good hit on the quarterback. But good job getting rid of the football by Poffenbarger. Yeah, Poffenbarger took a secondary hit from one of his own linemen, it yeah. appeared there on that sequence. Sandwiched. Now with time, throws over the middle, it's incomplete. Again, U Albany still with two timeouts. As Hicks, who just made that first down catch, unable to handle that one over the middle. Poffenbarger continued to go back and he just set his feet through behind the receiver on that mesh type of route. He talked about the center, Scott Hausman, and yeah, Jared Ambrose, the acting head coach, said, yeah, you know, he's a, a heck of a leader, not your prototypical old lineman. He says, you know, big belly, round face, but he's smart, and he recognizes reads and communicates well, and we have seen that. This whole line looks gelled, although there is some pressure here. Poffenbeiger uh, having to improvise, and he gets it out to Brevin Easton. Big pressure from the zero technique. Daniel Sauce Williams just really did a nice job of getting that inside leverage and walking the center back to the quarterback. Jared Ambrose saying, hey, look, we wish we were like Alabama and Georgia where we could get O-linemen 
whose backsides were the sizes of garage doors. Yeah, he, he was good fun to talk to. <laughs> now, third and five here, late in the first half. Well, what you're trying to preserve this three-point advantage, and you, Albany, with the two timeouts left, they'll go ahead and use one of them. You, you know what else was great? Charge him out of the half. Albany, 30 seconds. He said when the ball's teed up, the difference between FCS and FBS, the facilities throw them out the window, whatever the NIL money is, the cost of living allowance, it's a football game. And, and they felt very confident coming into this football game that they could compete, and they certainly have in this first half. Yeah, he says as far as their offensive scheme is concerned, he says it's hard to define. He tells us we can do just about anything mix a lot of different offensive philosophies together sort of in a blender he says uh, we want to get our playmakers opportunities to do their thing don't want to make it too complex he says the thing about coaching college kids is you know we're trying to send them messages but we're competing with academics uh, in many cases girls <laughs> other interests of college aged student athletes he says so you have to keep it simple but he says we don't want to be overly basic from an offensive philosophy yeah and they mentioned production and protection of the football pretty good job other than the interception right they've been productive they've protected the football somewhat See if they can get at least into field goal range here prior to halftime. Poffenbarger goes down. Well, he makes it a little bit more of an effort for Hawaii's D line, but ultimately he does go down. Andrew Choi was one of the first to him, and then Sauce able to finish the deal. Yeah, and Ezra Evai Malo as well. That whole front did a nice job of continuing to stay with the play longer than the opponent. discussion here among the officiating crew and this is defensive hands to the face face mask and it's probably a holding call I would imagine this is committee after the play was over unsportsmanlike conduct number one defense it's a 15 yard penalty from the dead ball spot an automatic first down that's the second game clock on the leader. please reset the game clock to 12 seconds as they add one, four two, seconds three. that's the second unsportsmanlike for hawaii already Thank in this you. first half that is number one's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game yeah peter manuma had one of those against vanderbilt as well as well which was kind of a late hit on the quarterback and he plays with so much enthusiasm, but you've got to play smart. Two plays possibly here, right? A quick out, something to get you in field goal range or some type of go route. And again, the one timeout remaining for the Great Danes, Poffenbarger. That one is dropped, thrown a little bit behind Caden Birdie. Nine seconds. Technically, you have two plays if you get a quick out, and it's on the three-step. Wise defenders will line up probably with outside leverage, play some type of quarters, four type of deep, three underneath the zone coverage. You see the intense dialogue there between Timmy Chang and Peter Manuma on the sideline. Second and ten ball at the Hawaii 44. Poffenbarger trying to escape. He does. Throws. Was he across the line of scrimmage? He completes the pass to Julian Hicks. The clock runs down to zero. And so under two minutes, the clock does not stop on first downs inbounds. And so that's why we run into the intermission. The first half is POW. Hold on unless. A Hold on a second. Hold the phone here. Jared is Jared Ambrose. Ambrose suggesting that they got a timeout call in before the clock inspired? Yep, and they did because here comes Hawaii back to the sidelines. The big fella showing some speed. Jared Ambrose, acting head coach. And if they do, apparently, it appears as though They're they have range. granted them the timeout. The previous plays and a further review. So this is big because if it is ruled that you Albany was able to stop the clock, then that's gonna be potentially a field goal opportunity here. Yeah, and you alert the officials, right? Your intention to call timeout as quickly as possible. They might also be looking at this, Rich, whether or not Poffenbarger crossed the line no, of scrimmage. It doesn't appear as doesn't though he appear. did. 
Look at how quickly they got that timeout from the sidelines, from the head coach of the acting head coach. Then you have to figure out what time is on the clock, where the ball is placed. Yeah, he, he's behind the line of scrimmage. And the Vanderbilt game, I remember that being well, that came something into play. similar yeah. came into play. Reminded of the rule that you have to be entirely across the line of scrimmage, your entire body, in order for that penalty to be thrown. After review, the runner completed the catch beyond the line to gain with two seconds left on the game clock. By rule, Albany has elected to take their final time out of the half so that we may add two seconds back. First down. Wow. How about that quick thinking and the quick feet, as you pointed out, of Jared Ambrose. And that's big because that affords the field goal opportunity here for John Opalco. Three for four in field goals this season. His long is 46. This would match that. And you think, Greg, that Tuso is smiling right now? Acting head coach. These are critical situations. The protocol was proper. 46-yard attempt coming up to tie this game going into the half. And he's got it. What a kick. John Opalco matching a season high. You mentioned tennis match, momentum, purple. Tied at 17 here at the break. There Take was pressure inside. He got the lift he needed, the accuracy. It's good by many yards right down the middle. You have 46 to be exact. Back and forth seesaw life here in Manoa. Again, some ill-timed mistakes for Hawaii. Hurting their own cause. We have an absolute barn burn here at Clarence TC Channel. Since we were little, we were inseparable. We shared everything. And anything new, we tried together. After a few hits of my vape, I decided it wasn't for me. She promised to stop, but it quickly became a part of her. Now I wish we never vaped, because it feels like it's my fault she's hooked. Sharing vapes means sharing addiction. Learn the risks at escapethevapehawaii.com. Elevate the way you watch University of Hawaii and local high school sports. On TV, online, and on the go. No matter where you are, the excitement is at your fingertips with Spectrum Sports and Spectrum OC16. You're watching Spectrum Sports, the home of University of Hawaii Sports. At Spectrum News, we're committed to strengthening the fabric of local communities through our coverage. Watch your favorite local sports on your smart TV and connected devices, streaming live 24-7 on Spectrum Sports and OC16. With on-demand weather forecasts and news that matters on the Spectrum News mobile app. Keeping you informed throughout the day. Spectrum News, your community connection. Exclusively for Spectrum customers. Now available on your favorite devices. Our islands are full of natural beauty no matter which way you turn. Discover all the outdoor adventures Hawaii has to offer on Spectrum OC16. the journey as your Rainbow Warriors take the field. Experience incredible plays, thrilling moments, and gridiron battles right from the comfort of your home. Rainbow Warrior Football on Spectrum Sports Pay-Per-View. Order today. Welcome back to the Clarence T.C. Ching Athletics Complex in Manoa with the University of Hawaii and Albany tied at 17. Let's take a look at the highlights here in the first half. Let's weigh in on the Honda dealers highlight reel right here. And on special teams, Carson Pupunu got things started. Matthew Shipley able to kick a 25-yard field goal to give Hawaii a 3-0 lead. Then Reese Poffenberger 
41-yard rush to give the Great Danes a 7-3 lead. But Hawaii able to answer back from there. Jonah Panoke scores his first touchdown of the season. Hawaii retakes the lead 10-7. But of course, Larry Walker Jr., 35-yard pick six to the Halle. And the Great Danes regain the momentum until Stephen McBride catches a 30-yard touchdown. 17-14 Hawaii at that point in the second quarter. But just before the break, he had a 46-yard field goal by Albany, evening things up at 17. How's it going, everybody? Aloha and welcome back to Halftime. I'm Rob DeMello. Joining me, what a treat. We got former University of Hawaii All-Conference quarterback Bryant Moniz, former Rainbow <laughs> Warrior offensive lineman, 2016 Ben Yee Award winner R.J. Hollis. And guys... We're in for a treat here. Buckle up, folks, because it's 17 all here at halftime between the Rainbow Warriors and the Great Danes. The Bows, of course, trying to go after their first win of the season here in 2023. We have a lot to talk about, but let's get things started by Mighty Mo telling us what you saw in that first half out of this Rainbow Warrior football team here against a very scrappy FCS member. Very scrappy, Rob. And like you said, buckle up. Because if entertainment is what you wanted tonight, you are getting it. You are getting it perfectly because they're they're coming out. They got a lot to prove. They're an FCS team, and they got nothing to lose. So you can tell by the way that they're playing, their energy, the plays that they're making. They're, they're challenging us on defense. Defense, we're, they're, we're, they're challenging our receivers with a lot of man-to-man -man, um, coverage. So we got to figure out how how to find our matchups, where's the mismatches, how can we take advantage of that and um, get our guys going. Um, just to be a little bit more consistent, you know, um, we came out with the block field goal, uh, the block punt, but we weren't able to capitalize and only walk away with three. And uh, we just got to capitalize a little bit more on that. But like you said, I'm looking forward to this second half because it is going to be a dogfight. RJ, we talked about it in the pregame show. This is a team in the University of Hawaii th through the first two weeks hasn't been able to get out of their own way. This has been a team that's been mistake prone here through the first two quarters. And when you look at the first half, you have nine penalties already in the first half of play. You've had some mistakes. You've had miscues. You've not been able to take advantage of situations like the block punt and only get three points out of it. Does this concern you a little bit? Because we were all talking about this is what you didn't want to see out of the Rainbow Warriors. Regardless of score, you just wanted to see some of the miscues cleaned up, right? Yes, most definitely. And Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting a different result. Make no mistake about it. This is an FCS team that had to travel 5,000 miles, but they are still in the minority of being Division I football players. They did not come to let Hawaii win. They came to play and have a more exciting 5,000-mile flight back to Albany, New York, where they can celebrate the fact that they came as an FCS team across the continent, across the ocean, and beat a University of Hawaii team that had two stellar games as far as, you know, preseason uh, prerequisites go. There was two games against Vandy and Stanford where Hawaii showed us they can do anything and everything that they put their minds to without shooting themselves in the foot. But unfortunately, they have unloaded a clip in the pinky toe all the way up to the big toe. So right now, the mistakes are killing you from having a game that you know should be one of your better performances. And Albany is taking advantage of every single mistake that you make. We knew how dangerous the quarterback Reese Poffenbarger was heading into this week. You saw what he was able to do against Marshall. But I think what's been surprising, uh, at least from our standpoint, has been the Great Danes defense. Defense. Their tackling has been sure. Uh, this is a team that they don't let you pass that first level of engagement. Mo, how big was that for the Danes? Like you said, very big. And 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 if I'm just looking at the secondary and what they're able to do against us, um, in that pick that they took the picks to the house, they were showing the coverage. And then right there, that safety right there came all the way from the backside. The front side safety rolled down. The corner stayed down, making it look like he was open. And then the backside safety pulled all the way over and was able to steal that pick right there. Um, so that was a great play by them, great rotation, and just something that they they probably seen in the last two weeks that they could exploit on us. Um, yeah, but we were able to make plays as well, right? When we got down in the red zone, the rub route that we got Jonah Panoke open on, that was by design. We got man-to-man -man coverage. We got a nice rub route, a, a slant route underneath. We need to get more of that in the second half and find out how, like I said, how do we exploit this man coverage that they're, they're making it tough for our guys. And, and then we got to get our yak. 
the run and shoot has always been about the yak guys that can get the ball and then make plays and yards happen after the catch. How do we make that happen? Um, we'll be looking forward to seeing guys step up in the second half and make those plays. Well, we're going to want to hear what Brian Moniz has to say about Braden Shager, the quarterback for the University of Hawaii. But we're going to take a quick timeout. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about this ball game tied at 17 at halftime. The Maui fire has caused unfathomable destruction to this town and people of Lahaina. If you or your family have been affected by this tragedy, you are probably going to need legal representation to file a claim for damages. You deserve a firm that will manage this complex process and be there for you every step of the way, allowing you and your family to do what is most important, heal. To speak to a qualified Maui wildfire lawyer, call today. They are here to help. Thursday, Hawaii begins Big West Conference play with a match against the CSUN Matadors. Rainbow Wahine Soccer, only on Spectrum Sports. You're watching Spectrum Sports. Not wait for this one. Great to have you with us. Felipe Ojastro, Darren Hernandez, Jimmy Bender joins us in just a At Spectrum day. News, Imagine we're committed to our communities around the clock. And now, Spectrum Internet-only customers, we're bringing Spectrum OC16 and Spectrum Sports to your TVs, delivering the most coverage of the University of Hawaii and Hawaii High School sports you love, and connecting you to your community 24-7. Spectrum News, now streaming, exclusively for Spectrum customers. People champ here, man. Want to remind you folks, check out the champ show right here on Spectrum OC16. Johnny, we come on at 7 a.m., 3.30 p.m., and 1 a.m. Three times a day. Three times, baby. Three times. Seven times a week. Whoa. 84 times a month where we bring you the best in food, the best in product. We say on the champ show, if it ain't the best, we don't give it to you. Amen to that. Boom. Friday, two of the premier offensive attacks in the state are ready to put on a show and light up the scoreboard. Unaho, Campbell, Hawaii Prep Football, only on OC16, exclusively on Spectrum. Welcome back, delivering some hot stats courtesy Pizza Hut here at halftime between Hawaii and Albany, tied at 17. You look down the board, rushing yards, the 59 for Hawaii doesn't look overwhelming, but that's about as good as they've done here this season, so that's definitely a bright spot for the Rainbow Warriors. 152 yards passing, about on pace for what they've been doing this season. Uh, the big one, though, eight penalties for 66 yards. Definitely something that the University of Hawaii would have to clean up, especially when you look at turnovers being down 2-1 to Albany here in the first half. All right, Brian Moniz, when you look at that first half of play, Braden Shager, the quarterback for the University of Hawaii, 13 of 20, 152 yards passing. He has two touchdowns, but two interceptions. What have you seen out of number 13 here in that first half battling adversity? Well, as coaches will always tell you, if we lose the turnover battle, it's hard to win the game. So we always got to protect the ball. Quarterback's number one job is to protect the ball. He's getting the ball out quick right here, and he's doing a great job. There's a few downs, key downs that we're, we're missing, though, right? We know Shager can throw the bomb. He does a great job at throwing those bombs. But these quick throws, those are the ones that are going to keep the offense on the field, keep the defense on the sideline, rested, recovering and um, fresh for when they come out hungry. But we just got to keep moving the ball. There's a few key ones that we missed. Cover zero, we went with a screen. Um, there wasn't the best call and for, for what the defense, they got us on that one. Um, third down and long, we had an out route to the single receiver side that I think Shager missed. And when he goes back to film this week, he's going to look at it that and be like, yep, next week I'm going to have to take a better look at that. And uh, those small things right there, you know, he's doing a great job. It's just the little things. and. Uh, Halftime, that's what you have halftime for, to reset. Coach Timmy's in there doing a great job, I'm sure of it, getting it pumped up, re-centered re and ready to come out this second half, fix those corrections, and come out with a win. Like a Blink-182 song, all the small things, right? That's what matters in the game of football. R.J. Hollis, when you look at this UH defense, Elijah Palmer kind of set the tone with his first career interception, the true freshman out of Bishop Gorman. They've kept Hawaii in this ball game, especially in between that second first and second quarters where the offense was giving the ball away they were having short possessions 
defense allowed this game to be 17-17, didn't it? Oh, yes, most definitely. And when you talk about Elijah Palmer, the Bishop Gorman product had eight tackles in his very first start last week against Stanford and then gives you the first turnover all season, which should have electrified your defense. On the opposite side, Albany is secure in the bag, as the young people would say, making all the tackles and all the right decisions. And, you know, even though it's not been the perfect offensive game, the defense has, like you said, stepped up in important times and kept them in this game. Like I said before, this is a Division I football team. The quarterback had four passing touchdowns week one against Fordham. This is a team that can move the ball, not something to be taken lightly. And so far, the defense has done the task of being able to step up and control the game, manage their assignments, getting some turnovers. Now you can got, try and go out there and be extra, but at the same time, you have to make sure you can keep this team in there long enough for the offense to catch up and you can get the victory that you deserve. Hey, Brian, you were a part of games in your career where you played FCS members. You were in games where Hawaii kept them in it and then you had to grind it out. I think Central Arkansas was one where that one was a tight one. But then a Weaver State as well. But then you had games like UC Davis where you're you're out of your uniform by the third quarter. How dangerous is it to let a team like Albany feel like they can win this game at halftime? Super dangerous. Because as, as I've mentioned, you know, they have nothing to lose. They're coming in here, like he said, flying all the way across the continent, across the ocean, and they're they don't want that's a long flight home if you lose, right? But it's a great flight home if you win. So they're coming. With this second half with fire, they just left the half with a field goal that tied up the game and gave them momentum as they go into this second half. So um, are we? We're, I think we get the ball second half, so we got to put that fire out immediately, drive the ball down, silence their crowd, and, and, and just keep it rolling from there. Key point, they got Mighty Mo in their locker room. We got Mighty Mo right here on Spectrum Sports. We're going to take a break. We'll come back to get you set for the second half. Ball game tied at 17 in Manoa. With the Pizza Hut Big Dinner Box, however you want a dinner, we got you covered. Big time. I do it big. I do it the Big Dinner Box. Two pizzas, breadsticks, and wings or pasta. Oh, hello. If new Heineken Silver was a riveting Viking saga. Lost this West. Your family tortured my first wife and stole my second favorite goat. Now you want to marry my daughter. No bitter endings. Heineken Silver, world-class light beer. A diagnosis of mesothelioma or asbestos-related lung cancer changes your life instantly. Where do you turn for help? Gallagher de Robertis and Waxman, the leading Hawaii mesothelioma law firm that has been representing clients for nearly 40 years. We really believe in our clients and their stories and experiences, and we believe in getting the best result we can for them. If you've been diagnosed with mesothelioma or an asbestos-related lung cancer, call Gallagher, Day, Robertus, and Waxman today. Hey, let's get out and enjoy our islands. Hanging with Ohana is the best, especially when you're in the eight-passenger pilot. The perfect island ride that's rugged and ready for wherever family fun takes you. Add a new pilot to your Ohana today. Part of KBB's best overall value brand for 2023. See a Hawaii Honda dealer today. And tell them Henry sent you. Taco Bell is so good and so cheap. I know, right? I wonder why. What if they know we're broke? What if they're trying to be the good guys? Ah. Thanks, Taco Bell! Welcome back. It's halftime tied at 17. Here we go into the third quarter, RJ. Hawaii has played about as bad as they can play yet. Still tied at 17. Do they feel good heading into the third quarter? They should, but if not, I got three words for you. That's all the time I got. Secure the bag. You got to go out there and do what's done. All right, Brian. Get the ball out of our hands and into our playmakers' hands. Let's, let's see them make plays the second half. Finish with the win. Well, here we go. You got two quarters of play left. Rainbow Warriors and Great Danes tied at 17. We'll be back after this one is all power. But Kanoa Leahy and Rich Miano on the other side of this break on Spectrum Sports. Oh, oh, hot pumpkin lattes are back. <gasps> 
Let's go get one. Hot pumpkin lattes. Ah, uh, right. You have a better idea? Pumpkin is back. Stay cool this fall with your seasonal dose of pumpkin with our rich and creamy pumpkin smash smoothie or the new pumpkin smash bowl bursting with cool fall flavor. It's a pumpkin paradise at Jamba Hawaii. Ah, pumpkin paradise. At Spectrum News, we're committed to our communities around the clock. And now, Spectrum Internet-only customers, we're bringing Spectrum OC16 and Spectrum Sports to your TVs, delivering coverage of the local sports you love. Spectrum News, now streaming exclusively for Spectrum customers. You're watching Spectrum Sports. In next week's episode of Ultimate Fan, it's finally a new season. First, we'll be in Gunma to enjoy a delicious curry lunch. Then we'll be taking the Hawaii people to enjoy a shippoyaki and tie-dyeing experience. Ichigo gari ga totte mo tanoshisou deshita. Skyla mo oishisou ni tabete ta ne. And finally, we'll be having an awesome deluxe buffet dinner. So follow me so you can experience Japan like you've never, never done, done before. before. Rainbow Wahine Volleyball. The tradition lives on. Cheer on Hawaii's team as they hit the court to take on fierce rivals and battle for Big West Conference supremacy. Precision plays, nail-biting rallies, hard-earned victories. All the excitement, passion, and intensity that is Rainbow Wahine Volleyball can only be found on Spectrum OC16. Exclusively on Spectrum. Spectrum OC 16 and XCast is giving you the best in prep volleyball. And massive matchups on the gridiron. From your home for Hawaii High School Sports, Spectrum OC 16 and XCast. Well, two teams that couldn't be further apart geographically are dead even here at halftime as we get ready for third quarter action. The Rainbow Warriors and the Great Danes of UL. Buddy, welcome back to Clarence T.C. Ching Athletic Complex. Next to Rich Miano, I'm Kanoa Leahy. And Rich, the thing that stands out once again for Hawaii, the penalties. They have U Albany doubled up eight penalties to four. Yeah, for 66 yards. And you talk about the layer games. You talk about unsportsmanlike conduct, and that's three weeks in a row now. One of my favorite players, number one, Meki, excuse me, Peter Manuma has had an unsportsmanlike type of penalty. Hawaii has to clean that up. Yeah, that last one, affording you Albany the opportunity to get further into Hawaii territory, setting up that field goal, and you saw the fact that the timing rules that allowed U Albany to complete that first down pass, the clock stopped, obviously, until the ball gets set under two minutes in each half. Uh, that allowed Jared Ambrose to signal for the timeout, which set up the field goal. Let's check in with our sideline analyst, Jordan Helley. What's up, Jordan? Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, talked to both head coaches there during halftime. First up for Hawaii, Coach Timmy Chang saying, hey, it's really one thing here and there holding us back on both defense and offense. Missed assignments, penalties on the other side. Coach Ambrose talked to him about, hey, being here for the second week in a row. How do they pull it off this week? He said consistency on defense and offensively, they like to possess the ball a little bit more here in the second half. Back to you. And there you see as Hawaii gets to work here in the third quarter they won the coin toss and deferred so getting the ball here first in the second half jordan johnson getting the carry jordan johnson getting a healthy amount of work here in this third game of the season the inconsistency for hawaii offensively in the two touchdown scoring drives braden shager was 10 for 11 Five for five for 36 yards on one, five for six for 58 on the other. In the other five possessions, he was three for nine for 58 yards and two picks. And I think mostly struggling on the edges, right? Josh Atkins, the left tackle, and Kayana DeCamber, the right tackle. It's physically a tough job, but at the same time, Hawaii might have to use some 11 personnel with that H back to help out on the edge. And Kelly. Big plays in that first half. Able to make the stop there. Third and four here for Hawaii. Shager throws to the far side. It is caught. That is Kowali Nishigaya, but it appears as though he was behind the first down marker. And Shager got hit right in the mouth. So he's throwing the ball. He's stepping up. He's keeping his eyes downfield, but there is pressure, and it's a four-man type of pressure. They're not bringing that fifth guy. They don't need to with those four guys up front doing a nice job. And that's Isaac Duffy again. Good wrap-up job. 
So fourth and one, we have seen Timmy Chang ultra aggressive from a play calling and decision making standpoint here this season. And they are going to bring in Dalen Morris for a little wildcat look here for Hawaii. Expect to quarterback power. There it is. And he is going to stumble forward, I think, enough for the first down, but just barely. His forward progress got the first down, but you talk about taking a shot. The, the Navy transfer took a shot. You're gonna see the quarterback power. What I mean by that is you're gonna add Vipulu. You're gonna add the H-back. You just add numbers inside. You add weight. You add bodies, and then you follow it up. Good job of delaying, letting that thing open up, and a shot delivered. Had a one-yard touchdown run against Vandy. Still active duty with the Navy, if you can believe that, while also playing college football. As the throw deep by Shager is incomplete, was looking for Ashlock. Leland Morris, heck of a story, attended the Naval Academy for five years, played over three seasons, and earned his political science degree. Yeah, Pafeli from that slot position, running that outside fade type of route, really well coverage. And again, still active duty with the Navy, and so if duty calls at any given time, Dalen Morris has to go. Older, mature veteran. Here's Najee Brian Lele. Making his return here after being injured in training camp. That's his fourth carry. Had 32 yards prior to that carry, but not a lot of running room here. Those holes plugging up fast. Yeah, watch the defensive front doing a nice job. The linebackers filling the gaps. Four-man front, formidable four-man front, all able to rush the passer. Good pad level. Again, a third and healthy situation here. Come on, Shay. Third and nine, Shager out of the gun. With time, heaves it deep, it is incomplete. It looked like Alex Perry had the advantageous angle, left his feet, but wasn't able to come down with it. U Albany showing pressure. A lot of guys up there, free safety coming out to the middle of the field. Hawaii picks it up. Good coverage in the back end as the big six foot five receiver goes up, tries to high point that football. And so Matt Shipley once again out there to punt here for Hawaii. An empty possession. Depending what happens here for the Rainbow Warriors. And Shipley does get it off. Fair catch is waved for, and Caden Birdie hauls it in. 42-yard punt off the toe of Shipley. You Albany football when we come back. Tied at 17 in the third. University of Hawaii Sports on Spectrum Sports. Sponsored by Bank of Hawaii. Being Hawaii's best bank has been our goal since we were Hawaii's first bank. But being first was just the beginning of a bigger journey and a deeper commitment. One first leading to another is how we set the standard for an industry and help turn trial runs into traditions. Because being first once just makes you the oldest. Doing it every day is what makes you the best. Bank on the best. First Hawaiian Bank. It all starts with yes. Your Hawaii Honda Dealers offers our sincere support to those affected by the tragedy of the Maui wildfires. Please kokua our community and families by donating to the Hawaii Community Foundation, Maui Strong. Here's the dream. Never stop doing what you love. The choices you make now can keep the dream alive tomorrow. So you can live your life your way. We're here to help with a personalized approach to a healthier you. This is me. Hawaii Pacific Health. My sponsor would say, just take it one step at a time. So when I needed to quit smoking, I reached out to a new type of coach, the Hawaii Tobacco Quit Line. They helped me cut nicotine addiction out of my life. Visit hawaiiquitline.org for free help. Welcome back. There's a look at Reese Poffenbarger. Eight for 19 in the first half for 73 yards through an interception. The first turnover 
that was recorded by this Hawaii defense this season but he has done some damage on the ground uh, the 41 yard touchdown run in that first half and that was the first touchdown of the game that was scored what yep. are your thoughts on Reese Poffenbarger here so so far He's athletic. Everything we talked about, extending plays, you know, the zone read, he throws the ball fairly efficiently, and he's a good leader. He's a smart football player. Griffin Waddell on the carry. 5'10 freshman from Glen Falls, New York. Didn't play last year. I thought Hawaii struggled on first down last week, right? And here you go again, giving up eight yards on first down. Hawaii has to become more physical. They have to read, react. Don't play robotic. Play like a Rottweiler. Like a dog. I thought you were going to say like a great dame. <laughs> As the pass falls incomplete. Riven Easton, the intended target. You mentioned Poffenbarger from Middletown, Maryland. Offensive State Player of the Year for Middletown High School. Sister Sailor is a star hoopster at Arkansas. Good shot of Isaiah Tufanga. Making his return here, had to sit out the first half because of the targeting penalty that he was issued in the second half against Stanford. So Pearl Rule had to sit out the first half. That's a good little boost for the Hawaii defense, for sure. Yeah, he is, right? You had the two sacks against Vanderbilt. You had good tackling. You had aggressive play. You know, he's lost weight. He's quicker. He's part of that lion's den. And I, and I think Logan Taylor and him really are the heart and soul of this defense. And uh, two good inside linebackers for Chris Brown, the linebacker coach. So first and ten here for you, Albany. And it's a give up the middle to Aiden, and he'll get out for about eight and a half. Again, on first down, damage being done with the inside run. I think this it's might straight. be among the biggest surprises, just how effective the running game has been for you, Albany, running right into the mouth of that Hawaii team. Yeah, yeah, and it's pure inside zone. Right? It's not power where you have an H back or a lead back leading up in there. It's just straight downhill inside zone type of running. 114 rushing yards now for U Albany's offense. Poffenbarger rolling, being chased, being grabbed, and being brought down. Tariq Jones wasn't going to be denied. Showing great athleticism from that defensive end position. 43 doing a nice job of tracking the hip, coming under control. Real good ball fake on the naked boot. Looking for that layered routes. Good coverage downfield also by the secondary for Hawaii. I know Steve Irvin, the defensive back coach, has to be happy about that. Jones, the 6'2", 245-pound sophomore from New Orleans. The ceiling is high for that one. Third down, Poffenbarger with some time. Directing traffic, fires incomplete. Had a couple of receivers sort of crowding the area. And so fourth down upcoming here for the Great Dane. Good series in the back end, right? You had quarter, quarter, half, and half into the boundary. The corner rolled up, did a nice job on the jamming of the X receiver, and then the quarters to the field was very successful, very technically sound. Good series for the Hawaii secondary. Pastula, who has uh, hit some dynamic punts throughout this season. We saw one earlier tonight, getting ready to lay into another here, Stephen McBride back to return and he just narrowly gets that off and it bounces on the turf McBride goes up like it's a rebound and hauls it in and will be wrapped up inside the 20. I'm not sure if he felt like he possibly had touched it or it ricocheted off him but disaster averted for Hawaii they'll have the ball when we come back under nine minutes to play in the third. Doc, I think you get garage -aritis. You mean gingivitis? No, garage -aritis. It's a disorder of garage-ing. garage -ing. Yeah, it's when excessive stuff meets limited space. Bango, garage -ing. Ah! And it's a problem. Is there a solution? garage -ara. Hawaii Self Storage got the excessive space for your excessive stuff. garage -a. 
Looking to buy a new car? Considering changing brands? Have you done your research? If you have, you'd see that Honda Windward blows away the competition. With the highest ratings and our customer satisfaction is number one. Our full service department and auto body shop bring it every day. Get the 2023 Honda Ridgeline for only $196 a month. Or the 2023 Honda Passport for only $199 a month. Friday, the Crusaders are marching with a purpose and a chance to take down an OIA foe. St. Louis, Mililani, Hawaii Prep Football only on XCast, exclusively on Spectrum. Here's another look at Stephen McBride. This was awfully close to catastrophic for Hawaii again. May have thought that he just caught a piece of it, so amid a slew of white shirts, he goes up and grabs it. Like he's Giannis Atentacubo in a crowd on the basketball court. Yeah, and it appeared he didn't touch it, but he wasn't sure, therefore, if he does touch it, it's obviously a free ball, and uh, good thing it came down in the hands of the Rainbow Warriors. Still Hawaii inside its own 20. First and 10 ball at the 17. Raven Shager, 14 to 23 for 155 yards. Two TDs, two picks. Play action, although the running back didn't exactly help to sell that, and the throw intended for Jalen Walthall incomplete. It's a good call by you because he did play action, but there was nobody to play action to, so I don't think that held any of the linebackers and definitely a miscue offensively. Hawaii's got to clean up this offense. You mentioned Shager's statistics. The two interceptions, the first one was really kind of a protocol type of thing with the lineman, but the second was a bad decision by Braden. So you're saying more of a play in action? Play in action. Again, the fake. This time, they throw it back to Hines, and he has hit immediately. Isaac Duffy is having himself a ball game, and he set it up for Amir Hall to come in and clock him. Yeah, topped it off. You know, you tackle low, then you come and you gang tackle, knock the Tyler Hines backwards. Watch this nice tackle right there, and then the finish. Always want to finish the play defensively. It's now seven tackles for Duffy. That matches Dylan Kelly for the team lead. All solo style. Kelly also has that interception. Third and 12, another third and long situation for Hawaii. The throw down the sideline. What a grab! Jonah Panoke with the sticky fingers. The pass for a first down. Back shoulder fade when the defensive back has the advantage. Look at Shager. You watch this throw for 23 yards. Pinocchi with a great catch. Really executed properly. And that's not easy to do, the timing of the back shoulder fade. So Hawaii converts its fifth third down successfully. That pass incomplete. Yeah, the initial read was to the X receiver Pinocchio on the speed break. Speed break out was covered. He comes back to the layered route, the vision route, and that's Kowali Nishigaya running that 12 yard dig route. Well, he entered the game about 41% on third down conversions. They're 5 for 11 here in this game. But they have put themselves into some difficult scenarios. Again, second and 10. Now the situation for Shager and company. 7.40 on the clock here in the third. Tied at 17. They're going to throw it out to the receiver that is Pofele Ashlock. And he's able to get some positive yardage. And they are started by Kowali Nishigai, number 23, with that good block on the perimeter. You got to see it right there. Watch 23. You got to love Kowali Nishigai, right? Pound for pound, I think maybe the toughest kid on this football team. Just always does his job, according to the coaching staff, as Jordan Johnson bursts through the hole. Gets thrown into the spin cycle a little bit at the end there, but damage done by number 11. Hawaii going tempo, and Coach Chang talked about this, but you're going to see a nice job up front, getting to the second level. 15-yard gain there by Jordan Johnson. Here he is again. 
And wrapped up by AJ Simon. Simon with his second tackle also has a sack and has just been bothering Braden Shager really throughout. Simon's a good football player, both against the run and the pass. You mentioned Boy going tempo, second and six, throwing it deep. It's McBride in the area. It is knocked away. There was a lot of hand fighting and contact downfield. No flag thrown. You mentioned it, hand contact, body contact, getting your head back to the football. They'll grab with that right hand. Sometimes the officials can't see that. Pretty good coverage downfield, and that's a questionable one. You can call that for the grab on the shoulder pad. That was Kavan angry all the team. team. Yeah. All team. There defensively. Ball court, ball court. Throw to the near side incomplete. Yeah, and that's another uh, back shoulder fade, right, which is a tough throw, and that means your wide receivers are not beating the corners vertically. Carson Pupuno, the intended target. He's going to need that if Jordan Helley's going to be correct on the player of the game. He's got that punt block. He's got to get a few catches. It's always a competition on the game. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Fierce. Bell usually comes out with something that's a little different, but those guys are knowledgeable. Yeah, they are. And we're putting Jordan to much more work now because he's doing the game on stuff, the post game, and the sideline stuff. Here's Shager throwing the other way. Deep it is caught. What a catch. Wolfall. And I think it's going to be defensive pass interference. And this thing could go if Neil Everett was still doing Sports Center. This is a spectacular 34 yard reception. I think it's a one handed grab. Pass interference. Number 20. Defense. That penalty is a climb. Touchdown. If this replay, if this is what I think it is, what a throw, what a catch. Watch Jalen Waffle with being held oh one-handed catch. Wow. I, I thought that looked spectacular from up here, and it was spectacular. Yeah, I think Neil or no Neil, that's top that's 10. Top, top, top 10 ESPN. Jalen Walthall with his first touchdown catch of the season, and it was magnificent. Wow, Jared Ursua, the receiver coach, has to be proud. Walthall continue to make strides. Point after is good. But well, he completes a 10-play, 83-yard drive over two minutes and 43 seconds, capped by the spectacular theatrics of Jalen Walthall on a 34-yard haul for six. Tuesday, two of the best in the state settle a score on the floor in an early season collision. Punahou, Iolani, ILH Girls Volleyball, only on OC16, exclusively on Spectrum. If new Heineken Silver was a riveting Viking saga, Oh, Your family tortured my first wife and stole my second favorite goat. Now you want to marry my daughter? Okay. <laughs> All the taste, no bitter endings. Heineken Silver, world class light beer. When my brother was eight, he was diagnosed with aplastic anemia and he needed a bone marrow transplant. When they ask you if you're willing to help save your brother's life, the answer is yes. His battle was one of the reasons why I decided to go into medicine. As a physician, my number one priority is to take care of my patients and help with their health. And HMSA has been an integral part of helping me do that. Tuesday, two of the best in the state settle a score on the floor in an early season collision. Punahou, Iolani, ILH Girls Volleyball, only on OC16, exclusively on Spectrum. Well, this was just unreal. The one-handed grab by Jalen Walthall. He had no statistics recorded coming into this game. The backflip, the perfect accent 
to that incredible play. Yeah, and what that backflip shows you is not only athleticism, but the vertical jump, which translates into linear speed, right? What an athlete, and again, has a little bit of problems getting better with the hand placement, but that was athletic at any level. Again, no stats this season prior to tonight. Now two catches, 45 yards, and that 34-yard touchdown reception. Played in 11 games with six starts last year. Had 27 catches for 333 yards and a tud. In his third year with the Hawaii program, a 21 graduate of Manville High School in Texas. Born in Houston. And so another Lone Star State connection. Shager, this time, to Walthall. Yeah, Walthall kind of fell down a little bit in the depth chart with Stephen McBride having that success. Alex Perry on the outside. Jonah Pinocchi, the return. But guess what? I love when they continue to believe in all of these receivers. Jared Arsua does a phenomenal job with these receivers, and, and that may be the strength of this football team. Yeah, Timmy Jang telling us, hey, look, our receivers might be young. They're going to be really, really good. And in many cases, they already are. Peter Manuma breaking that one up. And that's why, I mean, he plays with great enthusiasm. He hits through contact. He understands the passing game. He's good on the running game. He just has to stay away from personal fouls because number one can play. Now has 11 straight starts since entering the lineup in the fifth game of last season. He would put together an All-Mountain West honorable mention campaign as a frosh in 2022. Playing that high-low route, right? He's in the curl, and then he reacts up to the flat. Give here's to Aiden, nothing doing. Ezra Evai Malo saying, uh-uh. Isn't it amazing what enthusiasm, what adrenaline does? The offense does something big, the defense comes out, and this is Hawaii football. This is what we expected from the opening gun. And a little more of what we saw, at least for the most part over four quarters in Nashville in the opener this year. A different looking team, a different vibe certainly here in this facility at the moment. Still five and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. Poffenbarger escapes, room to run, gets tripped up. What an open field tackle that time by Jojo Forrest. And it's going to stop Poffenbarger short of the line to gain that was enormous. Yeah, it is. And he's tackling with the right shoulder. Watch him come to balance. Know that nobody's outside of him. And short of the first down, this is uh, maybe the biggest tackle for the Rainbow Warriors in the open field. Really nicely done by number eight, Jojo Forrest. So Pastula on to punt. Back is Stephen McBride. It was quite the adventure, if you remember last time he was back there. And look at this punt. Oh my God, this is NFL. This is majestic. This time fielded cleanly at about the 12. McBride putting the move on. Gets across the 25 and will be rolled up at the 28-yard line. We have a penalty flag back near the 35 on the other side of the field. And I think it's going to go against number one. Oh, no, maybe it's a hold against the punting team. Well, you had Peter Monoma standing right there near where the flag was thrown. A 57-yard punt, by the way, with a 17-yard return, at least as it stands. During the kick, holding number 30, return team. It's a 10-yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down and 10, Hawaii. That's big. One is I didn't want it to go against number one. <laughs> and two, it's, it's, it's a good sign for Hawaii. Also a good sign, number 51, Maurice Ta'ala back out there offensively for Hawaii. You remember you saw him walking gingerly, if that is possible. Correction. For side. That penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal from the end of the kit. So the correction made there, but good to see Mo uh, back on the field. They can ill afford to lose that guy for an extended stretch. So wait, that penalty was against Hawaii. Correct. The hold. The hold, yeah. Did they say the number? I don't number, recall them saying 30. the number, or I don't recall the number they said, I should say. It looked like Landon Sims was the number because they called number 30. That's the, number, that's the name that's been listed, but no, Landon isn't playing here tonight. It's a double number. As the throw is 
incomplete to Pofeli Ashlaw. Might have been Connor Moore. A um, little bit behind Ashlaw, a deep over route. Hawaii going much more to the run and shoot, much more to the passing game. Here's the throw, and it's picked off. Threw it right into the bucket of Amir Hall. Third interception thrown by Shager here in this game. Interception. First down, Albany. And just when Hawaii seemed to be finding something, finding some traction and some rhythm, a turnover, and you, Albany, with a golden opportunity to tie this thing up. And this one, you're going to see 88 go to the sidelines. Alex Perry and Timmy Chang, who has been a receiver coach his whole life, is talking to the receiver about not turning inside versus turning outside. So this is just a bad read on the leverage of the defensive back. Well, that's three interceptions for Braden Shade. So they're doing just a quick check upstairs to confirm that play. Third interception as it currently stands, thrown by Shager. And they do confirm it. And so you, Albany, lining up and ready to go here. First and 10. Just outside the 20. The throw to the corner of the end zone and running out of room was Brevin Easton. And he runs in to the wall. Hopefully not the clock, because that's a harder surface than the wall. And you just hope that he's okay. I mean, that was a full speed collision. Yeah, and the logistics of the end zone stands are very close to the end zone line. Well, it looked like it was primarily on the padding. Yes. Which is fortunate. That's been a concern of mine since they started playing here, but thank God for those pads, and hopefully that young man is okay. How about the fact that he came down with the football after all of that? Tough kid. 5'11", senior from Severn, Maryland. Previously attended Assumption University. Prepped at Archbishop Spalding High School in Maryland. Second and ten here for you, Albany. And it is going to be a give to Woodell. In the round, being chased by Peter Manuma, who gets to him, but not before Woodell gains about four to five. Woodell goes by the nickname White Lightning, and he can run. They say he can fly. I used to call Steve Tasker that. It was some Don Beebe from the Buffalo Bills back in the 90s. 28, that's Jets. So third and, don't give it Well, six on the carry. Third and four will be the official call here. Called the 15. Poffenbarger. Again, scrambling. Throws to the end zone. It is juggled and dropped. Marquise Dietz had his paws on it. Jojo Forrest in coverage really did not look back, playing the hands and the eyes, staying between the receiver and the quarterback. Quarterback on a heavy sprint. Oh, and Hawaii able to dodge a BB there. 32-yard field goal attempt here coming up for John Opalco. Already has a 46-yarder to his credit. Okay. Right at the end of the first half. This one is up, and it is good. And so you, Albany, able to trim the seven-point deficit down to four. A fortunate drop from Hawaii's vantage point there in the end zone. Well, Hawaii came into this week, all of the players, coaches, talking about just how hungry they are to get that first win. We talked about it in the open tonight, Rich, that idea of 
learning how to win. It sounds trite, sounds cliche, but it is a real challenge for a lot of teams. And it looks like you, Alvin, are going to make them earn it if they are to achieve that first win tonight. Yeah, and you and I both went to a lot of practices this week, and we saw the offense actually have to stop practice, run sprints, start the period over, because Coach Chang, who's been coaching these assistant coaches up, about making sure the attention to detail, making sure that the discipline was better, making sure that guys did little things. So Timmy Chang realized that, hey, this is a must-win type of game, and this is a pretty good organization that flew all the way in from Albany. Oh, and you figure you would love as much as possible to come out with a victory to have at least that semblance of good feels as you get ready to go to Eugene next week to take on the Oregon Ducks. This is taken by Chucky Hines. And he weaves his way to the 28. No whistle until the very end there. He gets twisted down. And that's where Hawaii will get started. Still with the four-point advantage, 323 left to play in the third. You know, one of the nice things that Hawaii is doing in terms of in-game experience is recognizing former players, right? Last week, it was the Satelli Ohana, and God, that was deep. There was about 20 former Satellis. <laughs> they came that rolling seemed through. Like, yeah, the Purcells, the Satellis, whatever. Today, Chad Owens, Bryant Moniz, Greg Salas. You talk about three of the greatest players ever to play in the program getting the proper recognition yeah brian sitting down with rob and rj during halftime that was cool to see yeah you've definitely seen that door has been open for the alums to make their way back and be recognized heck during the practice week this week uh, we saw one of the all-time greats jerris white who's in town vacationing with his family celebrating his 71st birthday uh, he was out at practice on tuesday addressed the team this is a guy who played at the university of hawaii out of Radford High School, was a cornerback, a member of the 1973 Hawaii team that defeated Washington 10-7 in one of the all-time wins in program history, one that really put the Hawaii program on the map, I think, from a national standpoint. As that pass is complete completed to Ashlock for a first down. Uh, he was drafted by Miami in 74, played nine years in the NFL, won a Super Bowl with Washington in 1983, and the guy looks just fantastic. Looks like he could still run a few drills out there. 19 interceptions and I've been around this program a long time I think the best cornerback to ever play at the University of Hawaii complete completion to McBride yeah you got to pick with him right well you know the thing about it is you talk about commonalities and if you believe in numerology he's 60 he's 71 I'm 61 we were both born on September 3rd and I'm not saying I was the greatest safety to ever play here, but he was the greatest corner, and I would have loved to play safety with Jarris White locking down the cornerback position. Oh, happy belated to both Mr. White and Mr. Miano. Completion to McBride. Uh, no, they'll say that he didn't hang on to it. It's incomplete. But, but, you know, and again, that's the rebuilding of this program. The alumni feel so welcome to this program. The amount of stuff that Hawaii's doing in the community. But this floor has to keep rising in terms of playing better football, playing cleaner football, being more meticulous in terms of the detail of your assignment. Finishing games, which is... This looks like it could come down to a last possession. Yeah, this is no easy task here for Hawaii. Third and eight. This has been a familiar scenario for Shager and company, and that has also been all too familiar. Anton Jukaj coming in and bringing Shager down to the field. Good hips, good hands, good get off, good motor. See him get that inside edge. Awesome. Speed to power. Fourth and 18 for Hawaii. That's the third the sack the of the game here for this U Albany defense. And so fourth and 18, Hawaii forced to punt it away. Again, Shipley with that Aussie style kick. Caden Birdie was back to receive, and look at the roll. This All the way inside the 15. Well, Scott Harding on that one. That ball just it. continued to roll, and that's going to be a big time net. 56 yards. That's flipping the field. Take a look at this. Matt Shipley changing the style here. And yet, how effective has this been? 
Yeah, now that I've become this rugby aficionado, I really appreciate the rugby style of punts. And I, I, I go back all the way to McBride. I go back to Alex Dunacci. I go back to Scott Harding. The Australians have kind of taken over. And Shipley's not in Australia, but he realizes that's part of the scheme. Yeah, that's the style for sure. So he, you, Albany, going back to work offensively and the completion there to Brevin Easton. He spins his way forward. Tackle credited to Caleb Brown. Yeah, Caleb Brown did a nice job coming from that cornerback position. And final minute here of quarter number three. Second down, four yards to go. Albany. Ball, ball is at the 18 yard line. Anthony Sangopolutele, and that's set up for the rest of the Hawaii guys to come and help. Yeah, Sangopolutele comes back from UNLV where he was a preferred walk-on, earns his scholarship. He's not tall enough to be a D1 football player, but guess what? He is explosive. He has a motor, and, and I am so glad that he's starting to get some good reps. Yeah, played his freshman year at that's UNLV before quarter. coming on back home. To suit up in a Hawaii uniform. We have played three. The differential on the scoreboard is four as we head into quarter number four. It is very much anybody's contest here in Mano. Bob gets us one, Joe. As a parent, we're always concerned about protecting our kids. As a pharmacist, I understand the importance of using sunblock when they're out playing all day. People in Paws Pharmacy now carry several commercial ocean-safe, non-toxic sunscreens and can formulate prescription sunscreens as well. If you have allergies, sensitive skin, rashes, and require prescription sunscreen, we work directly with your dermatologist and can provide compounded prescriptions for pickup and delivery. People in Paws Pharmacy, your one-stop medicine shop. You're watching Spectrum Sports, the home of University of Hawaii Sports. Be part of the journey as your Rainbow Warriors take the field. Under the leadership of head coach Timmy Chang, this year's team looks to compete with the run and shoot offense. Experience incredible plays, thrilling moments, and gridiron battles right from the comfort of your home. University of Hawaii Rainbow Warrior Football on Spectrum Sports Pay-Per-View. Order today. Let's get cooking. Getting ready for the start of the fourth quarter. Hawaii clinging to a 24-20 lead over you, Albany. Back down here on the field. It is legend of the run and shoot night here at Ching Complex. And one of the legends being honored back in the first quarter. My man Greg Salas here along with Brian Moniz and Chad Owens as well. Greg, before we get into the game here tonight, what was that like for you, your family, to be honored alongside Chad and, and Moniz as well? Oh, that was so awesome to be honored in front of my kids who never obviously got to see me play, but um, a great chapter in my life and an honor and a privilege to be recognized with those two studs. Yeah, and of course, right, the kind of the rebranding of the run and shoot here under Coach Chang, under Timmy. 
Uh, what's kind of been your impression? I know you're around the program quite a bit, but what's your, been your impression now, you know, almost three games in? Well, I think we look like a lot better offense this year, and the defense has been playing well. But as far as this game goes, I'd like to see them play a little bit cleaner football, less penalties, and take care of Shager a little bit better. It seems like he's getting hit a lot out there. Yeah, and just generally, uh, we talked about, you know, the, the impact of, of – of Timmy and, and this program. What's kind of been your impression of, of kind of the general state of the University of Hawaii program here in year two? Yeah, I mean, obviously you can see a leap in, uh, forward from this year from last year. Obviously they're a year more into the run and shoot. Hopefully we get a good play right there. But uh, it's fun to see them uh, continue to improve and do all the little things that is necessary to, to run, up, run and shoot at a high level. Right on. Always appreciate it. Greg Salas here down on the field. We'll send it back upstairs to Kanoa and Rich. Thanks a lot, Jordan. Thanks a lot, Greg. 42-yard putt, 29-yard return, but the penalty Aaron flag. The kick, holding, number three, return team. It's a 10-yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down, Hawaii. First of all, I'm glad, glad Greg Salas works for IMG Learfield. He's actually part of the program because he'd make a heck of an analyst <laughs> very well spoken very successful great NFL career great return by Stephen McBride Look yeah. at the spinning and the breaking of tackles unfortunately it's coming back due to the penalty and so another self-inflicted ill-timed wound here for Hawaii as we enter into the fourth quarter and yeah really great legends of the run and shoot to see those guys recognize Greg Salas, Chad Owens, Brian Moniz, they left their mark. Uh, I just know how uncomfortable this must have made them because those guys are so attention shy, right? Yeah, you know, <laughs> they kind of like the social media aspect. It's a different generation. But when you're handsome, when you're I successful, know, exactly. it's kind of hard. Exactly. I used to tease Greg Salas in his playing days. He always found a way at the end of plays for his helmet to fall off <laughs> just so we could show his... Uh, handsome grill to the rest of the fans. I actually played golf at OCC with him and it was a commercial for Callaway Paradigm. He hit his driver like I've never seen him hit it before. <laughs> there you How see. About Bryant's facial hair. What's your thoughts? I mean, these guys still look like they could suit up right now. Bryant Moniz actually came from Fresno City College where he was, when he came to the program, he was sixth string quarterback. They asked me as the safety coach, would I want him as a defensive back? Guess what? He ended up being, I think, the third or fourth most prolific <laughs> passer in UH history. Thank God he didn't become a safety. A true legend of the run and shoot. Again, a play action that didn't quite have the action. And Braden Shager victimized by it. Yeah, and I'm not sure if that's pistol, the protection stuff, the ball fake. Yeah, that, that is not going to fake anybody out in a white jersey. It certainly didn't fake number 42, Dylan Kelly, out. That's twice now. Kelly now with 11 tackles, nine solos, a TFL, and a QB hurry. Let's not forget about the interception that he had earlier in the game as well. Here's Shager. He's going to try to tuck it and go. And he will fall forward about a half yard shy of the line to gain. This is a crucial spot. Shag is feeling that edge pressure, right? He's stepping up quicker than he wants to. And then he's six foot three, 220 pounds, and he's lowering that shoulder. He wants to get to that first down yardage. So, yeah, fourth and a Manapua shy. And so Hawaii, as Timmy Chang is wont to do, they're going to go for it here. You see the fourth down conversions. They're two for two in this game. Dalen Morris not coming into the game. They may punt this. Take a timeout. Timmy is going to take a timeout. First, charge him out of the half. Hawaii, media timeout. So Hawaii will have two remaining here for the rest of the game. 12.48 to go. A fourth down decision coming up. Here's the dream. Never stop doing what you love. The choices you make now can keep the dream alive tomorrow. So you can live your life your way. We're here to help with a personalized approach to a healthier you. This is me. Hawaii Pacific Health. Hey, let's get out and enjoy our islands. Hanging with Ohana is the best, especially when you're in the eight-passenger pilot. The perfect island ride that's rugged and ready for wherever family fun takes you. 
add a new pilot to your Ohana today. Part of KBB's best overall value brand for 2023. See a Hawaii Honda dealer today. And tell them Henry sent you. Since we were little, we were inseparable. We shared everything. And anything new, we tried together. After a few hits of my vape, I decided it wasn't for me. She promised to stop, but it quickly became a part of her. Now I wish we never vaped. Because it feels like it's my fault she's hooked. Sharing vapes means sharing addiction. Learn the risks at escapethevapehawaii.com. So there's Timmy Chang with the Hawaii Huddle. Conjuring up a play here on fourth and short. Rich, what would you like to see? Well, it, it's almost like the Eagles, Philadelphia, almost illegally now are doing that kind of rugby scrum mosh type of push the quarterback. But I like to see Dalen Morris actually on that quarterback power led by Solo Vipulu. Well, we saw it work earlier in the game. We saw it work for a one-yard touchdown against Vandy. And sure enough, number 19 is out there here. Lining up at quarterback. Fourth and very short. Hines in motion. Moore is going to follow the block. And did he make it? Or did he get stopped short? Wow. It looks like he has been denied a first down. You, Albany, comes up with the huge stop. First down, Albany. You gotta see basically the quarterback power and watch 42 scrape over that linebacker position, get square, and knock Dalen Morris back. Wow, that is good linebacker play, good second level. And this has been showed on tape a bunch of times. You gotta add bodies to the mix defensively, and that's what they did, the Great Danes, with a great stop. And yeah, defensive coordinator for you, Albany, Bill Nessel. Very simply, as they give it to Aiden for the first down run and then some, he very simply stated to us when we talked to him this week, he says, hey, look, defense at its core is easy. If they got two blockers, you need three defenders. You need to outnumber them, and that is what they were able to come up with there defensively uh, against Dalen Morris. Uh, and how about the game put together so far by Dylan Kelly? There have been a lot of really solid performances here for Albany. That might be the best one here tonight. Yeah, that, that was impressive in terms of seeing it on film, walking through it every day. They've been here since Tuesday and then executing it defensively. Another give here to Aiden. Hit immediately by Taylor. And then it takes a couple other Hawaii guys, including Peter Manuma, to finish up the play. Yeah, and, and Hawaii's playing better defensively. Sauce Williams, Ezra Evai Malo, Anthony Sagapolutelli, and Foy Sila. Those are guys we normally don't talk about, but the front has gotten more stout, and I'll tell you, at the end, it has to be proud of that, but it's the linebackers coming downhill. Second and ten. And it's going to be given to Woodell. And there is that swarming defense and Isaiah Tufanga, number 17, again, had to sit out the first half because of the second half targeting penalty a week ago, making an impact here defensively for Hawaii. 20 personnel for you, Albany, which means two backs, zero tight ends, three wide receivers running that outside stretch type of play. Good job, Hawaii's defensive front and linebackers. Third and nine. We've already seen the leg strength of John Apalco, the place kicker. They are within field goal range already. But they trail by four. Waddell able to find a seam. He will be stopped shy of the first down. Fourth down here. What do you do, Rich? I would get on my cellular phone to the head coach <laughs> 5,000 miles away and ask him, should we go for this? Greg Gattuso, the veteran head coach. And it looks like they are keeping the offense out on the field. Good thing they've got good cellular service. That's right. That was very quick. Again, Coach Catuso not making the trip due to illness. Coastal Athletic Association Coach of the Year back in 2019. Fourth down and three. Fake handoff. Poffenbarger going to be stuffed. Isaiah Tufonga saying, ah, ole. 
unbelievable defense. They shifted and put the tight ends out wide, try to lighten the load in the box. Isaiah Tufunga was not fooled. Here comes Logan Taylor, right? He's coming down on the dive, scraping behind him is 17 Isaiah Tufunga, and you also see Logan with good quickness coming back on the tackle. Chris Brown, those are his guys. Stepping up, how about the defenses on both sides? Able to stiffen up considerably on fourth down. So Hawaii doesn't get it. U Albany doesn't get it, and it's Hawaii football after the dust settles. I'm a defensive purist. These last two series have been impressive tackling. Here's the toss. This is Jordan Johnson hanging onto the football and spinning across the 30 for a Hawaii first down. And that's big, right? Because you're trying to at least flip the field. You're trying to change field position if you have to punt. Every first down is big. A little toss. On the perimeter, you see Nick Senecal doing a nice job blocking out there. These receivers just don't run off defensive backs. They stock block in the open field. Nine rushes, 47 yards for Johnson. Shager got to get rid of it. He will instead be wrapped up. Whistle blows. And they reach him yet again. Jaleel Johnson this time leading the pack. Yeah, and that's not on the offensive line. The protection was good. The coverage was good downfield. It's kind of a coverage sack. And they brought an extra player. It was picked up by Johnson. A little more stout on the outside. Johnson needs to be on that block. But at the same time, nobody was open. Coverage sack. So nine minutes and counting down here in quarter number four. A second and 17. And you don't want to play behind the chains. Shager over the middle. Complete to McBride. Turns up field, gets all the way to the 40. I think they're going to mark him short at the 39, but... Shager going through his progression. Those are the mesh type of concepts, right, where you come across, get in the vision, make it a simple throw for the quarterback, let it develop. So third and short, they go quick. Najee Bryant Lele goes down quick. Ori John Charles, Anton Junkaj combining forces. Another fourth down decision by head coach Timmy Chang. Here come the big people. Faipulu. As well as Kilo Kamaka Vivioli. Another H back. So here we go again. Could be 12 Rich. personnel. We've seen a failed fourth down by Hawaii, a failed fourth down by U Albany, all within the last few minutes. Hawaii going for it again on fourth and one in their own territory. Out of the gun, the give. Najee Bryant Lele runs into a wall. Is he denied again? This is going to be a close spot now. It's a right foot, left foot type of deal. Looked like AJ Simon may have been. At the point, time out for measurement of that U Albany resistance. And the defense is starting to come on to the field for Hawaii, and I think that's a little premature. You don't want to show that press box. Good penetration, good stout tackling, bend your knees, six inch rising blow. Needed to get to about the 41. They're going to come out and measure this. You've already used Manapua as a reference. I'm not sure how close this one is. Oh, it's going to be more like a poor cash. <laughs> wow, that was. And so another defensive stop for you, Albany. You all right with Hawaii going for it in those two fourth down occasions, though, Rich? Well, it's one thing to go for it. It's another thing to execute and make it right. You're the FBS team. You have 85 scholarships. They have 65. You are supposed to dominate the line of scrimmage. It's not happening up front. They still are pretty anemic in the physicality of the running game. This is a U Albany defense led by Dylan Kelly's 13 tackles and interception. They've gotten to Braden Shager four times for sacks. And now the offense back out onto the field. Poffenbarger unleashing it deep, has a man. Some contact there. Defensively, Elijah Palmer was in the area. And it's going to be incomplete. 
Yeah, and I, and I think maybe uncatchable balls out of bounds because there was contact. The, the head was not back. Elijah Palmer trying to play the hands and eyes, and ooh, that could have been easily flagged as defensive pass interference. Well, Palmer had that pick earlier in the game. May have gotten away with one right there. Second and ten, under seven and a half to go. This is Aiden. Nowhere to run. And Logan Taylor was first to him, but now Logan Taylor is down on the ground, and he seemed to have Chris grabbed at his left knee, injury. Rich. Yeah, the inspirational leader of this defense, the verbal, vocal, plays hard in practice, means so much to number 16. Media timeout. Timeout taken. We'll see if Logan Taylor is okay when we come back. Hawaii trying to hang on here for win number one. As a parent, we're always concerned about protecting our kids. As a pharmacist, I understand the importance of using sunblock when they're out playing all day. People in Paws Pharmacy now carry several commercial ocean-safe, non-toxic sunscreens and can formulate prescription sunscreens as well. If you have allergies, sensitive skin, rashes, and require prescription sunscreen, we work directly with your dermatologist and can provide compounded prescriptions for pickup and delivery. People and Paws Pharmacy, your one-stop medicine shop. Pokey? Pokey. We have a local way of saying everything. Passion fruit. Lily koi. Donut. Mosara. Just like FICO, a.k.a. First Insurance Company of Hawaii. A.k.a. Crispy Global Strength on the outside. Soft doughy local service on the inside. Whatever you call them, gotta be the no. For home, auto, and business insurance, get the kind. First Insurance. At Spectrum News, we're committed to strengthening the fabric of local communities. Watch your favorite local sports on Spectrum Sports and OC16. Get on-demand weather forecasts and the latest news 24-7. Now available on your favorite devices. Spectrum News, your community connection. Be part of the journey as your Rainbow Warriors take the field. Experience incredible plays, thrilling moments, and gridiron battles right from the comfort of your home. Rainbow Warrior Football on Spectrum Sports Pay-Per-View. Order today. So here on this tackle concern, Logan Taylor seemed to grab at that left knee after the takedown, but while he was slow to get up, he is remaining on the field. There's also concern now for number 98, I believe it is, for Isila, who was helped off of the field on that same play. And he's being looked at on the table there behind the Hawaii bench. A costly play for the Rainbow Warrior defense. Third and 10 out of the timeout. Poffenbarger, they lose contain. He throws on the run. It is caught for a first down. Peter Manuma came out of center field on the blitz. It was picked up. Poffenberger does a nice job of stepping up, using that athleticism in a really accurate throw. Keep an eye on the line of scrimmage. You saw Poffenbarger scrambling, but yeah, well behind the line of scrimmage when he let that one fly. Yeah, and that's just a zone dog, right? So you're just replacing a rusher, dropping a defensive end out. And they're gonna keep it on the ground. This is Nate Larkins able to elude a couple of would-be tacklers, and he gets forward for a big game. Officials, Logan Taylor injury. is down again. And now Logan Taylor is down, and this one appears may to be not more be, serious. Yeah, may not be one that allows him to stay in the game. Oh, this has been an expensive possession here for you, Albany, from the Hawaii defensive standpoint. Yeah, Cody Sela, 5'11", 290-pound senior, being looked at on the sideline. And now Logan Taylor, who is one of the, if not the, heart and soul of this defensive unit. He looks to be in extreme discomfort down on the field. Yeah, this looks much more serious, right? And as good as Noah Kema is, as good as Jalen Smith is, the backup linebackers, this is the heart and soul, and you're going to see... Oh, boy. A lower extremity injury and he's in pain yeah we can't speculate right. but certainly enough of us 
have played sports long enough to know that didn't look good. And the cart was making its way onto the field, but it seems to be taking Foisila back to the training room. Oh, man. Foisila just changed his name. Was Foy Shaw, Shaw previously. Representing his family. 5'11", 290 pounds from Kaneohe, Hawaii. Yeah, we saw even uh, Najee Brian Lele tacking on the Lele as the, the brotherhood ideal, encouraging some of these guys to really embrace their Polynesian ancestry. Uh, we have seen that in a couple of forms. Concern for number 16, Logan Taylor. We'll be back. Aloha. I'm tax attorney Adam Brewer. If you have a serious tax problem with the IRS or state of Hawaii, then you don't need a tax relief company. You need a tax attorney. Call or visit my website to schedule your free tax evaluation. When you're finally ready for a new home, happily ever after isn't a given. It's a decision, a determination to put in the work, to make your own way. Follow your instincts. When you find the one, you'll know, and you'll need to be ready. First Hawaiian Bank will be there through all the twists and turns, using everything we've learned to find the best path for you. So you can stop dreaming and start moving. Bank on the best. First Hawaiian Bank, it all starts with yes. When I was struggling, my sponsor would say, just take it one step at a time. He helped me overcome a lot, but cigarettes were still my crutch. I realized that I need to stop smoking too. So I reached out to a new type of coach, the Hawaii Tobacco Quit Line. Their program has one-on-one -on -one coaching, free quit medication, everything I need to take that last step and cut nicotine addiction out of my life. Call 1-800-QUIT-NOW or visit hawaiiquitline.org to create your custom quit plan today. Aloha, I'm tax attorney Adam Brewer. If you have a serious tax problem with the IRS or state of Hawaii, then you don't need a tax relief company, you need a tax attorney. Call or visit my website to schedule your free tax evaluation. Welcome back. Let's check out tonight's Hyundai head-to-head -head stat line. U Albany rushing yards, 126 rushing yards per game coming in. Hawaii, 17 rushing yards per game through the first two. Tonight, 145 on the ground for the Great Danes. Hawaii, much better than previous weeks, 90, but they just saw one of their D linemen, Fully Sela, getting carted off the field, and they also saw Logan Taylor the heart and soul of this defensive unit being helped off the field with what appeared to be a leg injury. And busting through the line promptly is Nate Larkins. However, a penalty flag back near the line of scrimmage. But, Rishmiano, you don't have to be a defensive Holding expert like yourself. 84, offense, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. You don't have to be a defensive expert like yourself to understand just how serious the loss of Logan Taylor if this is to be something that's over an extended period of time will be for this defense. It's huge both athletically but more from a leadership standpoint. More from a demanding guy that wants guys to practice hard to do the right things they come out to practice and they line their helmets up and it has to be meticulously lined up because paying attention to detail is important to logan taylor he's the spiritual leader of this team as well second and 11. fake handoff poffenbarger they run an option play the ball hits the turf and it's picked up noah Kemma stays on his feet to the 40. tripped up from behind Center Scott Houseman preventing a house call. Hawaii needed a turnover and they get it by a guy. The ruling on the field is a backward pass recovered by the defense. Noah Kemma, right? He goes on his LDS mission. He goes through the, the almost the preferred walk-on process gets a scholarship to come to Hawaii and now makes the biggest play defensively maybe of this season 41 yard return 24 years of age served a two-year mission after high school played in the inaugural Polynesian Bowl all the way back in 2017 the old man of the group according to coach Chris Brown and just when he sees one of his mates having to leave the game due to injury. He comes up with arguably 
what could be the play of the game. Can the offense oblige? Shager brought down again. Sack number five for this U Albany D. Elijah Hills, number 93 this time. Able to get to him first. 6'2", 285 pound, long levers, right? Really working that chop move off the left defensive end position. Again, Shager has to decide to go with the ball, but give credit to the secondary of U Albany. There's plastering receivers. They're understanding concepts of this run and shoot offense. Closing in on five minutes to play here in the fourth. Shager, oh, it's gonna be a shovel pass. Solo Vipulu able to pull his way forward back across the original line of scrimmage. That's gonna bring up third and a little more attainable. This is the shovel, right? Yep, there it goes. <laughs> You can see Vipuli really create some positive yardage on second or third effort. Nadie Lauer, the director of football recruiting, would be proud to see a shovel pass still in the repertoire. Third and eight. Shager under pressure throws, and it falls incomplete. There was some contact, and two penalty flags come out. Pofeli Ashlock running the corner route. Shager gets hit again. And he looks a little shaken up after that. Anton Junkaj rattling the cage. Pass interference, number three, defense. It's a 15 yard penalty, An automatic. First down. Call goes against cornerback Bradley Igweki, 5'8 junior in Gilderland, New York, in his fourth year with the program. Number four, been very impressive all game long, the defensive end. There's a little Amazing. jersey tug. Ophelia Ashlock, the intended receiver there. And again, Anton Junkaj, number four. Got to Braden Shager, he looked a little shaken up, got up somewhat slowly, but he's out there. He hands it off to Mojo. Najee Bryant Lele, and he is wrapped up. Elijah Hills again there defensively. Why well, obviously needs to get into the end zone. A field goal will still be a one possession game. Not interested in stopping the clock. U Albany has all three of its timeouts remaining. Check it out. On the Hawaii sideline, meanwhile, Logan Taylor now out of his jersey has ice wrap around that left knee and he is on crutches, Rich. Second and eight. Shager throws to the corner, incomplete. Was looking the way of Walthall, who had one of the all-time highlight reel catches earlier in this game for a tud. That time, a little too much disruption defensively by Bill Hackett. Yeah, there's been good coverage downfield. This, this, that's perfect technique in terms of playing the hands and the eyes, trying to get in the pocket. Fully extended. Physically, maybe the toughest job in football is that cornerback position. Man to man. So here we go, third and eight. Red zone visit here for Hawaii. So you're gonna throw back shoulder, caught. Stephen McBride in for six. What a back shoulder fade, 12 yards. McBride understanding when to turn his body and great ball placement by Braden Shager. All number seven seems to do is catch touchdowns. That's number five on the season, number two here tonight. Nice job adjusting your body, using your hands. McBride runs the speed out the vertical route and does a nice job on that back shoulder fade in the red zone. And a crucial touchdown. Puts Hawaii up two scores here with 3.20 left, pending the point after, which puts Hawaii up by 11. 31-20 here late in the fourth. 
The Rainbow Warriors able to score and put themselves in position to maybe take this one home. The Hawaii Honda dealers highlight reel. It's Braden Shager going back shoulder. Stephen McBride for his second TD catch of the game. Yeah, and Shager, although the three interceptions, I know at least one, if not two, he'd like to have back, but he has thrown that back shoulder fade. He has thrown a couple of deep balls. He's thrown some dig routes. He's hanging in there. But the most important thing is to finish this football game. It's up to the defense now to come up, three and out, turnover, get the ball back. And they'll probably be playing in four down situation on defense. But right now, this tennis match in favor of Hawaii. I don't think this is a situation where Hawaii in any way overlooked the opponent or thought that this was going to be easier than it has turned out to be. You heard the players talking this week, Rich. Uh, they realize, hey, look, we're not in a position to take anybody lightly. There is nothing guaranteed. We're still learning how to win games. We have to take care and clean up some of the things on our side of the football. This is just a really good U Albany team coming out of the Coastal Athletic Association. Uh, and they have to this point given Hawaii everything it can handle still with 320 left. But an 11 point lead feels a lot better for the Rainbow Warriors here at this point. Yeah, and I think Coach Chang's done a good job because when you watch the film and you're watching FCS opponents, sometimes the crowd's not as big, the stadium's not as big. They don't have the marquee players, but this was a real football team, and Coach Chang knew that. And it's just a matter of now of finishing. Who's gonna say, I'm gonna make that play? Is it a Noah Kemma? And in this case, it was Noah Kemma coming up with a big defensive play, turnover, leading to that Advantage extending touchdown for Hawaii. Which game on crew member picked Noah Kemma as their player of the game? I believe it was Rob DeMello, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And knowing he might only play one half of the football game because Isaiah Tufungu was coming back, Rob DeMello never stopped surprising me. <laughs> Here's Poffenbarger. Little double pump. And a little too tall there for the intended receiver, Julian Hicks. Remember, U Albany still all three of its timeouts. But they need to score in a hurry. Three hundred fifty-three total yards of offense for Hawaii compared to two thirty-seven for U Albany. Rainbow Warriors found at times a little something on the ground, Rich. 87 yards rushing, that is a season high. Offenbarger looking to run, and ouch, gets creamed by Isaiah Tufunga. And Mekhi Pei, number seven, both he and Tufunga. Offenbarger lost a hat and a shoe. <laughs> you see the hat once in a while, you see a shoe, but he lost both on this particular play. We may have another Hawaii player down. This time, it's John Tui Tupo. Hawaii has already lost Fuisila. They appear to have lost Logan Taylor. And now John Tui Tupo. This would be, obviously, a huge loss. Hopefully, John is OK. Tui Tupo, who did not find out until hours prior to kickoff in Nashville against Vanderbilt that he had been granted a waiver for an extra year of eligibility by the NCAA. It was one of the great mysteries of training camp and the practice leading up to that opener. And when they got the word, you know, the coaching staff, and I would say Hawaii fans in general, were completely celebratory that this guy was going to be part of this team for another year. You just hope that whatever he's enduring here at the moment isn't too serious. Started as a walk-on. Now he would be the first guy to get off the bus, so to speak. Good-looking athlete. Really has paid his dues to become eligible in the classroom. And that's an encouraging sign that he's at least walking off, albeit with a slight limp on his own power. All Mountain West honorable mention last year three and a half sacks to go along 
with his 30 tackles. Guy good. that can do so many things up front. Yeah, good looking 6'4, you know, close to 300 pounds, really strong, explosive. Trey Lindsay out there now at quarterback as Poffenbarger losing the helmet. Steps to the sideline, and now that throw, an absolute strike to Caden Birdie. Okay, Trey Lindsay, a grad transfer from Auburn, had one game appearance over four years. And he steps in Personal foul, after buffering the passer, number 96, defense for late on the quarterback. 15 yard penalties and force at the end of the run. Automatic first down. And how about that? He steps in after being ice cold on the sideline, steps in for Poffenbarger, delivers a strike, and then has a hit delivered to him that gets penalized. And now you're giving you Albany with still 2.51 remaining an opportunity to get a quick score and give themselves a chance to get the ball back. They have all three of their timeouts remaining. Poffenbarger back in the game. That one falls incomplete. Andrew Choi, there's not a whole lot of personal fouls that come from that young man who's so studious. Attention to detail, discipline, but personal foul, 96. You're talking three games in, Rich. This has become a thing here for this Hawaii team. Yeah, discipline will be an issue. Poffenbarger in trouble. Goes down. They're going to say that he was down, but first to him was Nalu Emerson. Wow, the Kahuku guy who has not got a lot of reps. Nalu Emerson, straight up the middle. With some of the players first, that had to leave the game. Out of the half. Albany, As the timeout is taken by you, seconds. Albany. With the game clock operator, please reset the game clock to 2.30. 2.30, please. Oh, Poffenbarger was Thank arguing you. that he did not go down, but it looked like the elbow uh, did touch, which would mark that he was down on the play. But we're, we might be seeing some of the Nalu Emersons, maybe the Winden Ho'ohulis, with some of the players that have had to leave this game due to injuries or otherwise. We might be seeing some of that next tier of defenders on the depth chart, Rich. There, there's no question. You lose a Logan Taylor, you lo lose so much. And then guys like Nalu Emerson, who we know can play, prep standout, Kahuku. Also in there was Winden Ho'ohuli. It was nice to see Winden penetrate the line of scrimmage. So third and a long, long way. Here for you, Albany. Two timeouts left. Two and a half minutes to play. Poffenbarger sets the feet, throws it deep. It's rattled around and nearly picked off. Was up for grabs for a few moments. And there is inside pressure. Trying to hide the officials. Point. Time out for an injury. It's Jojo Forrest, physically the smaller of the two athletes, but doing a nice job. And we have another player down on the field. Another Rainbow Warrior defensive player. And the reaction of not making the play on either side. It was Jojo Forrest who was slow to get up. And this has become a bit of an injury bath taken by this Hawaii defense in this fourth quarter. Yeah, and they have to be as healthy as possible with that trip to Eugene next weekend. Brian Wong, the head trainer. Oregon improving to 2-0 oh with a win over Texas Tech today. Bo Nix, special quarterback, special athletes. That's going to be an atmosphere up in Eugene. Austin Stadium, that's one of the best in the Pac-12. Fourth and 22 here. It comes down to this for you, Albany. Got to get at least the first. They're going to go backwards. Ezra Evai Malo does it again. Remember last week against Stanford on a big third down situation, 
he was penalized for the face mask. Jake Yoro telling us, hey, it's about technique, it's about which shoulder you lead with, and all of that. You did it perfectly right there, Rich. Ezra Evai Malo, along with Anthony Sagapotelli, they're motor guys, they're quick guys. They don't have the size you're necessarily looking for, but they understand pass rush using their hands, using their leverage. And that play right there may just about have done it here for the Rainbow Warriors. First and ten, they're in U Albany territory. The give is to Jordan Johnson. He has led the team in rushing. That is his tenth carry now for close to 50 yards. So with two minutes remaining, how do you start? Where do you start with the assessment and evaluation of what we saw in week three from this Rainbow Warrior team, Rich? Well, you know, winning is hard, and this is not a poor FCS team. It's well coached. They have good athletes. They have good schemes. They're very disciplined. They were the more disciplined team this evening. So this is a big win for Hawaii. Hawaii it was a must win for Hawaii, but they're going to have to play better, obviously, next week. And going into the Mountain West Conference, they're going to have to find the ability to execute, to play a clean football game. Well, here is Johnson getting loose down the sideline. Pushed out of bounds inside the 15. Yeah, but well, guys like this, right? Johnson, Bryant, Lely, uh, even Tylen Hines, they have to develop the running game. That one's 28 yards, one of the most explosive running plays we've seen this evening. But there's still some concerns Second. with protection. Oh, they want to stay in bounds there, too. 30 seconds. Yeah, for sure. But he, get, he gets pushed out to the credit of... Well, timeouts taken by U Albany. They have one remaining. Yeah, so Hawaii at Oregon next week. And then they return home for another non-conference affair with New Mexico State, which has become a bit of a staple here on the Hawaii schedule on an annual basis. And then after that, it is at UNLV to get Mountain West play started. You have to now sprinkle in the concern about injuries and personnel the depth of this defense which was much talked about here going into this season is going to be tested here going forward and you still have the issue rich of cleaning up the mistakes the penalties which are far too frequent here for this team at key moments throughout football games there's a lot of work yet to be done there's no question there are more mistakes to correct and the coaches are going to be ha have to be harder after a win than they necessarily would be after a loss. They're going to have to really clean things up to be competitive next week. And what must be going through the mind of Timmy Chang. Win number one is right there now here in 2023. One minute away. And yet, you know he's thinking about the costliness of this victory yeah. and how much those injuries that we saw here tonight depending on the severity and seriousness how much those are going to impact game planning here going forward but in this very moment here 35 seconds away Timmy Chang can be confident they're in the win column here in 2023 yeah and you got to enjoy the victory but at the same time Lots of work to be done on the Manoa campus. It wasn't easy. But Hawaii able to secure the 31-20 victory here over U Albany. UH has now won its last 20 games against FCS opponents dating back to 2001. And you see the acting head coach, Jared Ambrose, for U Albany, and the head coach for Hawaii, Timmy Chang. Talking story at midfield. Uh, a lot of respect, I think, both given and earned here tonight between these two teams. All right, let's take a look at the Bank of Hawaii players of the game. And this victory for the home team, Dylan Kelly. This guy was an absolute beast. 13 tackles, 11 solos, had an interception, and also got to the QB. Stephen McBride, again, kind of that idea of a guy who just catches touchdowns. He did it again twice tonight. Seven catches overall, 72 yards. Very Chris Carter-like, maybe. Punt return yards as well, 38.
uh, for Stephen McBride. Those are your Bank of Hawaii players of the game. Rich, I'll kind of give you the last thought here. Oh, you know, again, we talked about the juice has to be worth the squeeze. These kids have been coming to practice every day. They've been working on their fundamentals. It was not a clean football game. There's still way too many penalties. There's some concerns with the offensive line, I would say, would be the biggest positional group. Special teams did some good things. The receivers made some catches. There was some running back play that I thought was fairly consistent, but a long way to go, and that's why it's a 13-game schedule. So again, the final score, 31-20. Hawaii improves to one and two on the season. New Albany falls to one and two. And so on a night where the Rainbow Warriors certainly left some areas still to be desired as far as improvement is concerned, they get the victory and they can feel good about that. We want to remind you about the post-game show coming up after we say a goodbye. But for now, from Rich Miano and Jordan Helley down on the field, I'm Kanoa Leahy. We love you, Maui. Until next time, we bid you aloha from Manoa. When my brother was eight, he was diagnosed with aplastic anemia and he needed a bone marrow transplant. When they ask you if you're willing to help save your brother's life, the answer is yes. His battle was one of the reasons why I decided to go into medicine. As a physician, my number one priority is to take care of my patients and help with their health. And HMSA has been an integral part of helping me do that. Thursday, Hawaii begins Big West Conference play with a match against the CSUN Matadors. Rainbow Wahine Soccer, only on Spectrum Sports. You're watching Spectrum Sports. Join us on Outside Hawaii as we explore the many ways that people take care of the environment and each other. From the mountaintops to the ocean depths, from our Hawaiian islands to far atolls in the Pacific, Outside Hawaii takes you on an adventure to educate and enrich your life. Tune into Outside Hawaii only on Spectrum OC 16. 100% original, 100% local. At Spectrum News, we're committed to strengthening the fabric of local communities through our coverage. Watch your favorite local sports on your smart TV and connected devices, streaming live 24-7 on Spectrum Sports and OC16. With on-demand weather forecasts and news that matters on the Spectrum News mobile app. Keeping you informed throughout the day. Spectrum News, your community connection. Exclusively for Spectrum customers. Now available on your favorite devices. Spectrum Sports, it's the Hawaii Honda Dealers post-game show. Aloha and welcome back to Manoa, where the University of Hawaii football team secures victory number one of the 2023 season with a hard-fought victory over Albany 31-20 as Rainbow Warriors improve to 1-2 on the season. How's it going, everybody? Aloha and welcome back. I'm Rob DeMello. Joining me, former University of Hawaii offensive lineman R.J. Hollis. And as mentioned, that's the headliner, R.J. The Rainbow Warriors get victory number one of the season. But by no stretch of the imagination was the game feeling like an 11-point ball game at any point of this thing. It's going to go down in the history books as a 31-20 victory, but this was a hard-fought battle for the Bows to be able to get that win number one in the column. Oh, yes, most definitely. I mean, hey, Albany, like I said earlier, is in that minority of being 
Division I football players. This was a Division I football team that came and gave everything they got. They brought that New York spirit. They wore Timberlands tonight with their shoulder pads. They were not wearing regular cleats, and these guys came to play. There was the expectancy of maybe a better performance and even a larger margin of victory for the University of Hawaii, who had two games against Power 5 teams. But, hey, Albany saw what you put on tape, too. They came here excited. They came here drooling with their mouthpieces hanging in. You may not hear the term moral victory all the time, but I think tonight you may hear the word moral loss in the locker room as this team knows they could have put forth something better. They did get a win, but when they go review the film, it may not seem like the score will matter the way they might get chewed out come Monday. And truth be told, this is a University of Hawaii football team who hasn't won a lot recently. They went 3-10 and 10 last season, and so despite it being against an FCS opponent, despite it being against a team that I think a lot of people thought that maybe the University of Hawaii should win by a larger margin, despite the Great Danes having taken Marshall into the fourth quarter last week this was a game that Hawaii could have lost because things were getting very sketchy in the fourth quarter you had the back-to-back -back possessions where Timmy Chang elects to go for it to try to pursue that drive but Albany gets the ball back they could have taken the lead right then and there but the defense stood strong they were able to keep the Great Danes out of the end zone Noah Kemma comes up with a big fumble recovery this was a big win because Hawaii hasn't really learned how to win yet, right? Oh, yes, most definitely. And the irony of it all, Rob, is the mistakes is what cost UH the first two games. The mistakes is what kept Albany in this game. And it was the mistake that Albany made that gave UH the chance to capitalize and win the game. So it was mistakes on both sidelines, on both sides of the ball for both teams. But I think UH has to figure it out sometime soon that we cannot keep having games where we have almost 100 yards in penalties, where we have multiple turnovers, where we have special team mistakes and expect to be able to compete in the Mountain West. You have to go up next week to Outson Stadium to play the University of Oregon, who will give you no mistakes. So the University of Hawaii has to figure out how to stop shooting itself in the foot because through these first three games, I don't even think we've seen the best form of this team. Yeah, you talk about shooting themselves in the foot, 11 penalties for 100 yards. There's a reason why that's yellow right there as far as that is a big bugaboo for this Rainbow Warrior football team. Now, in all three games this season, penalties, penalties, penalties. That is what we talked about in the pregame show that they cannot do against this Albany team. They did it, and we're still able to get away with a victory. I think that is key. But let's look at some of the miscues for this Rainbow Warrior football team. Braden Shager goes out there. He throws three interceptions. He goes 23 of 40, 266 yards. He does get the four touchdowns, but how concerning is it that they gave the ball away against this Albany team? Uh, I think it's very concerning, especially when you talk about an offense that's supposed to be kind of made in a, a form of seeing the defense as it goes and knowing what it sees beforehand. I think you got to be able to come out there and understand what's going on fully. There has to be a connection between these wide receivers and Braden Shager. There has to be the understanding that Timmy Chang had, that Colt Brennan had, that Brian Moniz had of this run and shoot. And he had more than enough glimpses, but going forward in this season, he has to find a way to have more plays like the ones that are playing right now. Braden Shager, as we mentioned, four touchdown passes to go with the three interceptions. Steven McBride, seven catches, 72 yards with two touchdowns. Ophelia Ashley, four catches, 74 yards. Jonah Pinoke had his first touchdown catch of the season. Jalen Walthall, who had the amazing one-handed touchdown catch in the third quarter, followed up by a backflip, may I add. <laughs> yes, sir. Everyone played a part in this offense, doing enough to get this victory. But when you look at the receiving core, it was Pofele Ashlock, Pofele Ashlock in the first two games to be able to see Shager spread it around and get other guys into the end zone and have other guys have their moment here in Manoa. How key is that? Um, it's huge. You can't be a one-trick pony, especially in the Mountain West. You can't be a team that's just going to come out and expect Pofele Ashlock to put up 100 yards every single game, for Braden Shager to have 350 every single game, to have one receiver and one quarterback pretty much taking over the entirety of the game, you have to be able to spread it out. You have to be able to so-called share the pill. There has to be more dependable guys. There's 11 guys out there on offense, so you can't put it all down to two. Having guys like McBride, having guys like Ashlock, but also having guys like 
Tamatoa, Mokiao Atamalala, also having guys like Koali Nishigaya, having guys like Jalen Walthall to be there and step up and be there when you need them. It's absolutely huge. And as you go forward in the Mountain West play, you're definitely going to see these guys uh, be necessary to success if UH gets it. As mentioned, victory number one of the season for the University of Hawaii football team and head coach Timmy Chang, who now has four victories in his head coaching career just moments ago. Our Jordan Helley was able to talk to coach Timmy Chang following his victory 31 to 20 over Albany. Down here with coach head coach Timmy Chang coach first win out of the way. What's it feel like? Uh, it feels good to win, but you know, it's um, it's it, from uh, just from trying to set the standard and be perfect and be better. You know, it's um, there, there's a lot of work for us to do. I mean, on the field, off the field, it's just it's just a work in progress for us. And so it's good to get a win, but there's a lot of things that we can correct and get better at. Yeah, one of the points of emphasis was the rushing game. Over 100 yards on the ground tonight. What was working a little bit better for you guys on the ground? Yeah, I, I, I thought I thought the, the guys did a good job of opening up some of them holes. Um, again, they're, they're, it's timely, right? Um, you know, we, we didn't convert on, on, on two four downs, and our defense played a hell, they did a hell of a job. One turnover, another stop. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that you want to see uh, play complimentary football. And so uh, it was really good having 100 yards, but at the same time, uh, we need to be better. Yeah, one last quick one for you. Three games in, basically a quarter of the way through the season. What have you learned about your group so far? They're talented, but there's a lot of there's a lot of work. You know, there's a lot of work, and 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 they're going to start seeing these things. We're going to correct it off the film. We could correct them a lot harder with the win, you know, and um and and uh, just keep going back to work. Right on, coach. Thank you. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Thanks, guys. You're not going to entrust just anyone to sell your ride. Life sounds like. Let JN Group, Hawaii's most trusted automotive dealer, sell it for you. Our consignment program makes sure you receive the most for your vehicle. And with multiple listing platforms, we're sure to sell it fast. So let Hawaii's largest dealer group help find a buyer for your car. Now this is living. I'm alive. <laughs> Kauai Museum, where the ancestors come to life. prefer the feel of print or the convenience of digital, there are more ways than ever to find savings for you and your family. It's one of the many ways that your Longs is making sure you have everything you need. Make Longs a part of your day. Reawaken the feelings that ignited that first spark and surprise your loved one with a piece that tells your love story. Made in Hawaii with aloha and yours to gift with love. Capture heartfelt moments and make the memory of a lifetime with Maui Divers Jewelry. Discover our locally made Hawaiian jewelry exclusively in Hawaii or at MauiDivers.com. Welcome back to the Hawaii Honda Dealers Post Game Show. Welcome back. The University of Hawaii 31-20 victory. The record book will say 31-20, but I think the lasting image of this game will be that Jalen Walthall touchdown one-handed with the backflip. Pretty impressive stuff right there. Give him 10 on the dismount. Number four with the touchdown and back flipping his way back to join us here, Jordan Helley. We got R.J. Hollis, I'm Rob DeMello, and Jordan, let's get your thoughts here on this University of Hawaii football victory. Obviously, win number one of the season, that is huge. To get into that win column, to be tested the way that they were against this great Danes team, this is one of those character-building victories, perhaps, right? 
Yeah, it really is. And a lot of it, and Canola Guys talks about it, you know, in the pregame, right? Learning how to win, finding out what it takes to get W's. And it's so interesting, you know, getting the chance to catch up with Coach Chang at halftime. And so much of it, right, they're, they're like a, a block away or a, a missed assignment away on defense or making sure that they don't shoot themselves in the foot with some of those penalties from really kind of taking another step with this group, right? They feel like they really have a talented roster on both sides of the football, especially in this pass catching core with Pofele Ashlock and what he can do. And I know Brian Moniz, right, the former quarterback for the University of Hawaii, who joined you guys at halftime. He talked about the yards after catch. That is such a hallmark of the run and shoot. And Ashlock really was the guy who was able today to get loose after the catch. And that's going to be so big for this offense to start moving the football, I think, with more consistency is not just you know some of the deep balls that has been there for them that has been a big big you know point producer a touchdown producer but sustaining drives right trying to avoid getting into those fourth and shorts for this group they're going to have to find a way to get that a little more consistently I think for this offense to get on track let's talk a little bit about this University of Hawaii defense Peter Manoma with eight tackles Logan Taylor who we saw get hurt at the end of the game he had seven tackles but especially late in the game because of some of those injuries you had some of the reserve players filling the void and coming up big to help Seal the deal here for the Rainbow Warriors. Noah Kema with the fumble recovery. You had Ezra Evaimalu with big sack. You had Nalu Emerson come in late in the game. How big is that, RJ, for this football team? Because this is perhaps the, the unit that's going to go up and have to face a nationally ranked Oregon team next week with the mounting injuries on this team. Uh, it's huge. It's, it's almost a mirror version of what I was speaking about with the offense where you can know you can trust your first 11. You know you have starters in there that can get the job done. That's why you start them. What happens when they get injured? What happens when they get tired? You need your reserves to be able to come in and compete. You got guys like Elijah Palmer. You got guys like, you know, Mekki Pei, who is a starter. But you got guys like Nalu Emerson, the Kahuku graduate who was able to come in off the bench and make some things happen. Noah Kimma, your guy to watch before the game, Mr. Rob. And he was the one that cashed in on the biggest mistake that kind of gave everybody that final sigh of relief that the University of Hawaii was going to get a W. So as we all know, a 13-game football season is grueling and you would also be not you would almost be naive to think you're going to take 22 players and make it through all 13 games so there's a reason you have backups there's a reason you recruit there's a reason you say next man up there's a reason you demand excellence from everybody on your squad because you are one injury one funky play one bad play one busted toe away from being in there and throughout this season and throughout this dog fight even tonight it showed that those guys those backups those extra guys are gonna have to be able to step up and when they get in they're going to have to perform at the exact same level as those starting 11. The Rainbow Warrior running game goes over 100 yards that was one of the keys to this ball game Jordan Johnson the leading rusher 11 carries 76 yards Talon Hine goes four carries for 30 yards but still the running game is still a concern based on in the fourth quarter when head coach Timmy Chang wanted the running game, wanted the offensive line to seal the deal and continue those drives on consecutive fourth downs. I mean, you have to feel like you're going to get that if you're an FBS team facing an FCS team. Jordan, what are your thoughts as far as the line of scrimmage goes and not being able to win that battle? Yeah, there, there comes points in a game, right, where you need to impose your will, where you have to impose your will. They didn't do that great tonight, and it was kind of interesting, right? Coach Chang's comments there after the game in talking about it. They, they rushed for over 110 yards. That's a huge improvement off last week where they rushed it for negative five. But the timeliness of it, being able to run it when you need to run it, being able to run it when you want to run it. And it, it, it's, I think, going back to, and, and they've been pretty open about this, right? Trying to figure out the balance to this offense. And it's the run and shoot while also trying to mix in some of these run looks, right? Whether it involves a tight end, whether it involves some of the H-backs, right? We saw Kamaka Viva Ole in there. We saw Solo Vaipulu quite a bit, not just in the backfield, but up on the wing, up at tight end uh, in some of those short yardage situations. And I think trying to marry those two ideas, right? Some of this power run game where they're running a lot of counters, where they're pulling a lot of guys. And while also trying to figure out exactly how they want that run and shoot passing attack to look like, it's gonna be a work in progress. There is there 
we're naturally going to be some growing pains there, but you're going to have to start seeing them, especially as they get closer and closer to that Mountain West opener in about three weeks time to start really figuring out how that is going to pair up. RJ, when you look at this football team, where do you think the biggest step forward was outside of a W in the column? Because obviously that's what they're going after. But there were a lot of question marks, especially going from week one to week two. And it looked like the, the Rainbow Warriors took a step back a little bit. They go up against this Albany team, like we mentioned, gave Marshall everything that they had. And keep in mind, this is a weekend that Fresno State was taking a double overtime against Eastern Washington. Nevada lost to Idaho. It's in the air as far as these FCS teams, or at least the top-level FCS opponents go. But what do you think the biggest learning lesson was for this Rainbow Warrior team and, and, and the step forward that they may have taken outside of just getting the dub? Uh, I think the biggest lesson will be just bringing the fire and desire and the best version of yourself. And I know that sounds simplistic. I know I'm the guy that's always passion, always energy. But, you know, that's a big thing in the sport of football where violence is a plus, where energy is a plus, where eagerness to succeed is a plus. So I think the biggest step that they had to figure out is like, we got to come out there and be the best version of ourselves. We have to come out there as the most intense version of ourselves. We got to go out there and take what's ours. You guys got, you got guys like Jordan Johnson, whom before this game had no touches or very few touches and comes out and takes the leading rushing spot over a guy like Tylen Hines, who was already marked to be the running back one. You got guys like Noah Kimma stepping up when a starter goes out. So I think these guys are seeing, you know, if it's not going to be the starters, it has to be somebody because at the end of the day, we got to put the guys out there that are going to give us a victory, that are going to lead us to a victory. And as we can see, and as you just mentioned, in Division I football, regardless of the level, you have to go out there and take it. Nobody's going to give it to you. Nobody's going to let you win. You have to go out there and take it. And that goes to anybody, all the players, all the coaches. That's now 20 consecutive victories for the University of Hawaii football program over FCS opponents dating back to 2001. Again, a 31-20 victory for the Rainbow Warriors against Albany. We have a lot more to talk about on the other end of this break. Stay tuned.